the smartest man. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. And so the Bears are sending their compensatory fourth round pick to Jacksonville for Nick Foles. I know we need to run the ball more. I'm not an idiot. Had to be me, we added the barber moderator. Up and down, boys got you double checking. Sad sack strolling like a full drunk texting. Flexing on the truth, cause you know they'll never change. Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Shane. For hundreds, what we do when we're breaking down the bears. Fuck a plate or a captain, all of the up chairs. never lies. You see, we lies, we lies. So there's no way he's like Maybelline. Straight to the truth with acumen and facts. We got a sad nerd, but it's not just giving. Nerd sack, car crash, big impact like Max Sack. Every Wednesday night, you got the smartest man in Phil back. Now we know you're smiling like a fat kid with fun dip. We're back better than ever, and we're keeping it a hundred. Keeping it a hundred, baby. Give me 100. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man in the world. Keeping it 100. Keeping it 100. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man in the world. Keeping it 100. There we are. <laughs> Why is that open so long, Phil? You know we're going to oh, hear that in the morning. Oh, my God. I don't think people recognize like creativity on a level of putting things together to mold like you could go to a shit show and just like those guys like wear sunglasses talk shit have no a gold chain on no shirt talk about things that have been talked about later as if they're breaking news now or copy the tape never lies name and put out your own shit it amazes me the le levels of people doing things and then we like do an artistic we take chances we joke we put music we do parodies did you like the christmas parody i had to pull greg i, Bragg. <laughs> I had to pull greg Braggs's voice out of there i could see him in the chat he's probably fired up where's my voice jay <laughs> do you know the stress that i'm under <laughs> every week i'm gonna do a christmas parody leading up to christmas listen we don't have much to enjoy here in regards to the football level of playing the football team the the sport the greatest game in the world we don't have much to celebrate it's always anger and vile and venom and listen this weekend i had a lot of life experience popping off in our face from my father the surgery went well i intended to videotape him and, and he has a message that's going to come out this weekend he wants to speak to the ttnl 100 crew and all of you guys sending love and prayers was so humbling for him he couldn't believe it when he got out <laughs> i swear to god the first thing he says to the doctor apparently <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll share the other stuff later but he goes did they fire naggy that's what he wanted to know after he got out of surgery on a monday four more night. weeks coach four more weeks oh my god it's it's so 
difficult. Listen, breaking news on the tape, Never Lies Network. We got to do it. I got permission to do it, so I'm going to do it. And we do it in our way. Breaking news. The tape never lies. Network. Breaking news. Oh, yeah. Breaking news here on the TTNL Network. Our guy, the barber. Smoke weed every day. That guy. The producer, the Let's cut go. it out segment He's is not going to go down tonight, Shane. He has, unfortunately, all jokes aside, I, will, I need your prayers and positivity for our boy. Claudio has a, gotten the COVID virus in all seriousness, and he is feeling it. I texted him earlier tonight. I asked him if I could share this, and in all seriousness... He's like, Phil, I'm so sick. I lost my taste, my smell, um, my body aches. I got a constant headache, and I'm exhausted. So all prayers, all thoughts are to our boy, the barber, Claudio. Um, I asked him if I could share it with the crew. He has become so attached to the to the network and everything like that, and I, I, I had to you know, shadow. I told him, don't even worry about fucking coming on the show tonight. We were gonna, we'll we were gonna it. make him do it with a mask on. <laughs> we were, we were, Shane's like, out. let's make sure he wears his mask if he comes on this show. <laughs> it's funny because you know my dad and everything, and I was yeah. like, Claudio, don't come no. over for the game on. So, so thankfully we did, and Claudio wasn't feeling well for the Packer game and the other game. So I haven't seen him in three weeks. So that was that was good, but selfishly good for my family and everything but my dad you know we had to be very cautious with that and now we got to pray for our boy claudio i'll keep everybody posted um i don't know if he's he's probably sleeping now so it sucks you know, the virus is real people wear the masks hopefully the vaccine comes out i'm not going to get into politics but i am going to say this straightforward it is real and you have a responsibility, and you see the Chicago Bears, Shane, have guys on the practice squad carrying the virus, yep. getting shut down. Uh, it's up and down. You have thought this team is going to hide behind the COVID virus and not do the right thing and get fire everyone. I see Sun Times articles now. They're putting headlines, fire everyone. You're seeing the national media coming to the level of where we've been for two years calling this rinky-dink organization and the things that they're doing with this GM. You saw it in the song open, and you also saw it in the open. I mean, what happened on Sunday with the wheels coming off as David Kaplan was on the show last week, it's crazy here, Shane, with COVID and the Bears. Bears fans have nothing, really, to get excited about except this network and tonight's guest that we have on. Yeah, and... I say we go there. He's been waiting in the green room. We've I been know, chopping it up with him a little bit pregame. So that was <laughs> yes. that was a good time. So I think he's I think big he's moment for me because this guy. He, listen, growing up in Connecticut and being a Bears fan is hard enough because then you got tagged with the well, you're only a Bears fan because of the '85 team, and that wasn't the case whatsoever, <laughs> as my dad could attest. Yeah. I love the Walter Payton. And that became my loyalty. Yeah. So those of you fans of mine that have always asked me, how did you become a Bears fan? Walter Payton, I was scouting at third grade. My father asked me, what do you want to play? Running back, Dad. I want you to watch these. Who's the best one? And there was Billy Sims, Tony Dorsett, Franco Harris, and on and on. And then there was this number 34. And I'll never forget, it was all white uniforms. They had all white. And he had that 30, and I was like, number 34, sweetness. That's me. And I always became him when I was kill the man with the ball. And I was always <laughs> Walter Payton wearing the shirt. And, my, and then was it four years later, the 85 Super Bowl shuffle, and I'm so big into rap music and break dancing at the time it was like perfect it was like the perfect storm and then what happened shane i got freaking punished for life and then this guy came around and there's always some 
players that I just adore on a football team. So in the 90s, as I'm, I'm playing football in high school and playing these big games, and you're watching the Bears and the ticker, and you're praying that the Bears are going to be on because there's no satellite at that time. You're just praying. You're watching the ticker. And then you get Madden and, and Summerall somehow would do a lot of Bears games locally here in Connecticut. They would be that, that game, and you'd get them. And then this guy would come on and make some plays for me. And I never forgot the guy. I reached out to him. I said, you got to come on here. I got to tell you our story, but I'm going to tell the story to my story of Lemieux and, and how he affected me when he come on here. Let's do it our way, though. Let's do it our way. We, this guy deserves this intro. If those of you millennials that don't know this guy, it's time to pay attention right here. This is what he was about. Forget the temperature outside today. The Bears were hot at Soldier Field. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So was Lemuel Stinson, yeah. wasn't he? Lemuel Stinson lit the fuse that started today's fireworks at Soldier Field, and that helped blow Atlanta right out of the water by making uh, two of the Bears' four interceptions. This guy was selected in the sixth round of the 1988 NFL Draft out of Texas Tech by your Chicago Bears. During his career as a cornerback for the Bears, he appeared in a playoff game every season except one. And in 1990, picked off six passes and only 10 games played. Bears fans, get out your seats and give it up for the former Worthington coach. He's Lemuel Stinson. Wow, there, there he is. is. <laughs> Lemuel, can you hear us? What's up, what's up? There he is. <laughs> there he is. I see you, I see you. How are we doing over there? Oh, doing great, doing great. Just just moving around, trying to stay uh, limbo and loose. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to keep you loose here. I know... There's been some <laughs> little bit of delay on your side. I guess mine feed was getting a little choppy. My better. You got now. a little choppy there for a little bit, but you're good now. Yeah. Right. I know Lemuel's was a little. He's yeah. getting a little choppy, but that's what happens sometimes on this thing. For God's sake, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but hey. there's the open six interceptions coming into that. I mean, that in and above itself in a season is something. You never could scratch a stick at. You go out there and you play your butt off out there. And and what was that season like in regards to you being out there on at Soldier Field? It was the old Soldier Field at that time. So what was it like, you know, being a six round pick, coming up for Coach Ditka, and really playing? For, that season right there first of all let's we'll skip dick if, for the next question but what was that season like where you were intercepting the ball i remember that falcons game was on tv yeah. and you were just you just put that game away and Deion sanders was trying to do his talking but one corner stood out that day and that was number 32. Yeah. <laughs> well i'll I tell you what that was a great game uh playing in atlanta uh playing against atlanta uh, those guys was John Jay Rising and uh those guys were really uh guys that can play the game and and, and Dion is is a great corner. I think he's uh he's a good guy. I'm never gonna say anybody is better than me, but you know <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he, he, if somebody say you you say somebody better than you then you you wouldn't very much yourself. But he was a great corner <laughs> and uh he played a lot and done a lot. He's really smart coming out to uh out of, out of college. But that game was great. Uh Atlanta came down, they was talking a lot of noise. And, and a lot of people don't know how I got really started. Uh, uh, they came to me in the locker room and talking about, uh, you know, what y'all receivers going to do. I mean, I don't have no receivers. I mean, we don't. I mean, my receivers are going to catch the ball. They're going to go out and do what they need to do. I don't care if Dion, whoever's covering them, uh, who's out there, and uh, they're going to catch the ball. But they thought we, our guys was trash. Our receivers wasn't good or anything. Right. So I said, hey, our receivers go out against everybody. Everybody going to catch one ball. Everybody catch five balls. I don't care. You know, we're going to win the game. And uh, it got to going and going. And then I went to a meeting and came back to the locker room. And uh, 
uh, Tony Mellon, he told me, he said, hey, Stenson, you got a call. And I got a call from who? I thought something my grandmother called, you know, something wrong. <laughs> you know, thought you were in trouble. <laughs> yeah, get to the phone and, you know, yeah. young man, you know, on the phone, who is this? You know, Joe, Joe, Joe Stenson, you know, who is this motherfucker? I'm like, who the hell is this, you know? And we got to talking, and at that time, I said, "Dog, I'm from Texas. I feel Florida in my backyard, so I don't care about what's going on up there. But, you know, he had his thing for Florida, and I had my thing for uh, Texas, and we went out there and showed out on the field and played and, you know, played to the best of our ability, and I ended up winning the uh, battle. You know, I, I said, I, I always say I'm going to get two picks because there's always two picks out there you can get. And I went out there and got those two picks. So that year was just – really amazing for me because the beginning of the year we played Seattle I picked off one and then I picked off another one I was going to take it back and I stepped out of bounds that I can remember <laughs> and uh <laughs> they say that so that's what they tell me but, you know I have to look at a lot of film to we gotta of watch the tape thing. on that we gotta yeah, see yeah. it on tape <laughs> but it was a nice pick and I you know I was continually getting picks and everything for that season you know for Dicker Dicker was a great coach I mean a lot of things that Dicker did back then was to make us better at what we do and how we do it. Uh, he, he put pressure on us. You know, we can't go out there and play like dogs and, and expect to step on the field. He had a, a persona, persona about him that he wanted to make sure that we do our job and not worry about it. Because, you know, your job at that case was on the line, at that time yeah. was on the line every day, uh, every <laughs> practice. You know, they get they, today, I don't, they, don't, they, they didn't worry about a the job. They just keep yeah. on going to work. We had to fight for them jobs back then. So, you know, don't get me wrong. I, we, we, we paved the way for those. And I say, I can't say we. I think the guys before us right. paved the way for us to do what we needed to do and these guys to do what they need to do. So, they, you know, some, sometimes you think, you know, these guys need to go back and think about, you know, who started this thing. You know, because baseball is a tight-knit group. Uh, basketball is a tight-knit group. And uh, we're still searching in football, especially with the retired players. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, talk – you talk about accountability there. Oh, every, yeah, yeah. every practice you were coming out here oh, in yeah. Chicago, we're looking at tape. Obviously, I've sent you my video breakdowns, and, and you see missed assignments, fundamentals being lackadaisical, effort being questioned, loafing. Would that shit go down when you Ooh, were playing? No. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, you know, you, if you, you'll be up out of there. I mean, yeah. it's, it's plain, and plain and simple. Uh, Dicker would, you know, it'll be somebody, you'll see somebody in practice one day, and the next day, where did he go? I mean, yeah. it, it was a DB or it was a receiver here. Where is he at? And you don't know where they're at. So, you know, you're sitting there looking at him and like, man, he's not here now. So uh, these guys, even on other teams, you know, guys was out of there quick. They didn't play like they now. I, I think they got so much money involved now yeah. that these guys, uh, they, 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 they kind of got him a little bit, you know, because some guys, a dude told me he had two interceptions in four years. I'm like, dogs, two interceptions in four years, we'd be cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like, two interceptions in four It's just it kind of, it, and it's, it's, it's so crazy now because we preached a lot of technique back then, you know, and looking at film and constantly. I learned to look at film with Mike Singletary. Yeah, fundamental. Yeah. Phil and I talk about that all the time, how important that is, and it gets overlooked for whatever reason at the yeah. at the highest level. I mean, something so simple. But Lemuel, you talk about you know fighting for your job. That's that's one of the big things today. Is now you're you're looking at the zeros on your paycheck with that guaranteed money, and that that's that's really the separator. The guaranteed yeah. money has creeped in. I'm not gonna I'm not bashing these guys for getting their money while they can. I totally get it. Yeah. But like you said. You, you come in as a six rounder. You 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 could go out and pick off a couple of passes and do something wrong in practice. You, you you could be gone the next day. You just didn't know, and that's the that's the biggest difference between you know 1988, 1989, 1990 to now and, and even previous. But one thing that I always when we get players on here, I always like to take you back to draft day. What was your draft day like? Did you have a lot of contact with the Bears? leading up to the draft i know it's a whole different beast nowadays i mean now it's like a red carpet event and it's a you know oh, yeah. must see tv <laughs> but I, I tell you what it is the funnest part about my draft my uh my first my my, my ex-wife we were uh in college and uh my agent said uh hey you going uh first you're going either the late uh early first early second round or late uh uh, uh, third round, somewhere off in there, in between two and three. And at that time, we had 12 rounds. Yeah. So um, um, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it. So 
I stay up all that night looking at the draft. You know, one first round come through, second round come through, third round, fourth round. So they get at the end of the day, they end up with the fifth round. So I'm looking at, I like, shoot, I better get ready to talk to some of my teachers because I was, you know, I missed a few classes as we all do. We missed a few classes, you know, trying to do what we're doing for us working out and things. Right. And I said, well, I better get ready to talk to these teachers. I need to go back to school because I looked in, a, uh, went to get a newspaper about four in the morning. And um, at four in the morning, when I get to, got that newspaper, it had 32 DBs went before me. Wow. wow. And I looked at it, I said, oh, my God. I said, 32 DBs? I'm not getting drafted. This, I don't know what this agent was talking about. <laughs> and and then, <laughs> by 9, 9.15 that morning, uh, 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 Mr. Tobin called me, and he said, uh, I said, uh, how you doing? He said, uh, hey, how you doing, Olympia Stinson? Uh, we just drafted you in the sixth round. I'm from the Chicago Bears, and my name is Mr. Tobin. I was like, I said, man, y'all stop playing with me because the guys was calling on the phone. You know, <laughs> we got no cell phones. We was yeah. on regular house phones, you know, right. when you dial the phone and, hey, yeah, rotary. <laughs> yeah, we like, hey. You hope you have the long line so you go in the yeah. closet and have some privacy. <laughs> man, have the yeah, <laughs> the rotary. Off. I had the rotary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were sitting in there, and uh, like I said, we were. Uh, he, he told me, I said, man, y'all stop playing with me. He said, no, nah, I know a lot of guys have been calling, probably playing with you guys. And, you know, here's what what what, uh, what we did, and we drafted you in the sixth round. And I said, man, he, he said, it's for real. I said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all I kept saying. He said, well, I'll give you the details. And at that point in time, we uh we ended up going to I uh, ended up going to Chicago. Let me ask you this: Go back to Mike Singletary watching tape with Mike Singletary. Mm -hmm. Here's a veteran obviously taking a young buck under his wing and teaching you how to watch the tape how what was that experience like for you mike mike is a very i understand we had the same high school coach coach and uh at mike's with mike singletary mike and myself we had uh oliver brown and, and uh i had coach Elliott at the at, at after you know at the end but uh coach brown was our coach and that he coached mike he coached me, he coached Cliff Branch, yep. he coached uh, uh, Charles White, he coached all these guys. So we got a lot of great athletes come through the school. So, you know, it's just not us guys, it's a whole lot more guys. David Ladden, you know, we got guys come from everywhere in high school. Uh, but Mike, looking at film, he taught me one thing, and that one thing I always remember about Mike, he always looked at film, and I always used to ask Mike, how do you know how – what's going to happen in the game and how it's going to happen and what's going on. Cause I'm still young. I'm a rookie. Right. And uh, he said, Hey man, he said, you sit down and look at the film. Like you're looking at San Francisco's son, like you're looking at a TV show, like you're looking at a rerun. Cause every time a rerun come on, you'll know how the, uh, uh, what's going to happen next. If you look exactly. at the show over and over and over, and over again. So I start doing that and, you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't rewind the film. I just keep looking at it. And so you start getting guys tendencies. Oh, he should have do this on this play. He should have do this on this play. And then you start seeing coaches. And his thing was he's not playing the team. He's not playing the guys on the field. He's playing the offensive coordinator. Right. So that's what we used to do. We, we used to sit back and look at film. We say, okay, we got to look at the offense coordinator, see what he want to do. And I remember getting in trouble by Dicker one time. I looked at the uh, Detroit Lions, and they were running shoe with wearing those guys and uh, green and all those guys and the run, the the, the, the little, little receivers. And they boom, boom, boom. They running routes. Yep. I say little. I was only 150 pounds, 155 pounds myself. Wow. But uh, those guys was uh, running routes. So uh, green, uh, uh, green would run an out. He'd run a curl. He'd run a slant. And then they'll repeat that system. So they got the ball on the 20 and Digger, I was catch he caught a pass on slant he ran it out he didn't catch it they threw it he ran a curl he did all that then he rotated and did it again dicker said stinson get tight on him come i already knew where i wanted to be at at that time so i said i got this he said you don't get it i'm gonna pull you out that's how they were hey you're going, you're <laughs> yeah. going to the sideline so i said okay next next play i'm like they're gonna run i seen it i broke on it i picked it off i was running down the sideline about 70 about, about 50 yards 60 yards and Barry Sanders came on side and hit me and knocked me out of bounds and fell through an elbow because Barry was a little pissed at me too for me <laughs> hitting the <intercepts laughs> like that. But uh, you got that next extra tag, 15 yards on that. But, um, you know, that's what we had to do, you know, look at film and see how it go. And then when I went to the sideline, I said, hey, coach, I had him. I was setting him up. He said, you better have to hurry up because I was going to pull you out. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. He said, yeah, I'm okay to go back. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the thing. 
Let me one. We're looking at the 2020 Chicago Bears. Just as a as a former Chicago Bear and as a football fan yourself, when you're watching what's unfolding right now before your eyes, how what do you see that bothers you the most about this team? It's, it, it, you took a deep breath there. That can't be good, man. <laughs> hey, the list goes up. Yeah. <laughs> I know y'all say we can swear out. <laughs> yeah, let her, let her rip, man. Hey, you got to get them out. You got to hey, get them Hey, listen, I'm in, I'm, understand, I'm in Houston, Texas. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. Sean Watson, to me, is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Smart. Yep. Can get the job done. He had a little mishap. If, and if the Texans was upset with that, they they, they need to be something need to be uh, done to those guys. But he's a great quarterback. Um, our guys, they're not trying. I mean, I'm gonna start with the offense. Yeah, I'm not offensive guy, but when I'm watching offense, I I, I check them out. You know, quarterback wise, we not we not we not we don't have a quarterback right now. Well, I mean, we got a young kid, and and it's not Trubisky's fault for them putting him in that situation. Right, they right. put him in that situation, so it, it it's not his fault to go out there and uh, 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 execute the head coach's game plan. He's he, I'm not sure how many games, but I think it was 11 games that he started in college. I mean, and then you're a first round draft. It, it doesn't happen that way. You know, if somebody's seen something in, in 11 games, that's 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 different. Whoever that guy is need to be somewhere else. Um, <laughs> but not saying that's the biscuit fault. The biscuit is a great. I mean, to me, he can he can be good, but he got to back up somebody. Uh, Foles. I mean. Hey, his, I, I don't know how, I don't know where his arm strength went because right now he's not throwing the ball strong enough, and we got two tackles. Oh. I want I, and I don't know names. I just know a few names, but we got two tackles that the walrus, uh, <laughs> seventy and is it seventy two or seventy four? I mean seventy two. Yeah, seventy two. We call him Speed Leno. Bump Charlie. Yeah. Hey, they. I don't know if they're young. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, because everybody's out there to do the job and do the best that they can. If that's the best that they can do, then them coaches need to do something and step up for their game plan because we had dig, you know, we had coaches that would not take that. You know, Jim McMahon is not getting hit. Uh, Hey, uh, Becker, uh, Van Horn, y'all better block. And they block, you know, and if they, if, if, if Jim got sacked, Becker, gonna, Becker Van Horn going to make sure Tom there and, and, and Jay Hilgenberg and those guys right there, they're going to, and uh, Boyce, they're going to make sure that uh, those guys don't touch that boy again. Don't touch him again. So we not we don't have no dog in us right now. We have like, we little Thank puppies you. or something. Thank you. Know, you. We, Everybody got a little milk, and they going to get breastfed or something, you know. <laughs> you know, even even when we go into tackling on the field. Now I'm gonna tell you something, Matt. Mac Mac has his thing. He's 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 a beast. They they double. Oh, they yeah. they chipping him off. Mac doing we can do ninety four. Like I say, I don't know names a lot because I don't. I mean, we don't get as much in Texas, but he he does a good job. Ninety four trying to come off that edge and yeah. and, the, and the front line is doing so. But the, I mean, our linebackers, man, you, line you when you look at linebacker, I'm so used to you know uh, Mike Singletary bringing that hat, Otis Wilson bringing that hat. You know, uh, uh, Ron oh, yeah. Moore, I mean, uh, 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 Ron, Ron Revere. Ron, Riverboat hat. Ron. Yeah, hey, we, I'm used to uh, Jim Smells bringing that, uh, Smells bringing that hat, you know. So, John yeah. Roper, we had guys that's going to hit you and, and dare you to run back through there. And then we look at our secondary. I mean, maybe young. I don't know. I don't pay attention to names. Like I say, where the schools they come from? Because once you get to the league, you're a professional. You got to act like a professional. Right. And right now, um, I was second there. We we trying to strip the ball and give him ten more yards. And oh we talk and, about and, it every week. Thinking, why are you stripping? Go through and hit and do what you need to do and make sure that the job get done. But they don't do that. So that's my thing. I I I, I think we play. We, we we piss poor on defense. Uh, from 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 linebacker to sec, to secondary. And I won't say this here because I I tell each and every one of them guys if I tell you what I, what I tell you, I'm gonna yes. tell them the same thing. If I ever talk to them. You got to get better by getting harder. You got to attack and you got to hit. With Mike Dicker, with Vince Tobin, with uh, 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 those guys that we play with, no, nah, that'll never stand. You'll be on the sideline or you'll be cut or you'll be walking out the next day trying not for another team. You're you're preaching to the choir here. This is what I talk about every week. And these fans, you could see the comments uh, popping up. Shane and I are trying to do Claudio's jobs, and I usually we have a producer, but like I said, <laughs> for those of you just checking in, Claudio, send him some love. He is 
dealing with the COVID virus and oh, he's not yeah. here tonight. So uh, you said yeah. some a couple things in there. So I got to go back. I got to oh, backpedal. No we, we, we got Listen, it. We got you it. talk <laughs> about the tackles. Let's start there. I have given this guy, Leno, number 72, so many nicknames. I listed them off in my film breakdown today for the first time. But it's, <laughs> it's so disappointing because of what you said to Van Horn and these players. You saw like an agitated letdown when they gave up a sack or didn't do their assignment appropriately. Yeah. With this guy, we're just seeing oh, go back to the huddle or help the quarterback up with the lazy Fred Sanford <laughs> just style there. It's just like, hey, let me help you up again, Mitch. Uh, let's go back to the huddle. It's so disappointing. Yeah, it, it doesn't take long to watch to see who's doing what and how he's doing it. Uh, if you know football, you know, sometimes you sit in a, in a uh, – sports bar or somewhere with guys who just talk football but don't know football and exactly. you tell them hey man this is happening and that is happening but when you got a tackle and those guys are not protecting him and then don't get wrong that could be one reason foes trying to hurry up and get that ball out or he ain't getting it out for enough because they they're not getting that that protection like what was and, and then, like i say uh Tabisky, he's a he's a running quarterback he's a, he's a zone read run the ball yep. Yep. And they they know why he drafted. And I think some of the play calling is 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 not as good as it should be. I, I expect a lot from a uh, uh, coach um, when when he first came to the to the league. But you know, being in Texas, I I have to hang my I hang my jersey up in front of my house. Or I hang my jersey up in the in the Raptors or whatever. And shoot, these people come by and they 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 Texas. They 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 they, they hey, take that jersey down. No, nah, it's bad. It's bad country when you walk around here. I love what, you, what do you do when you see we'll go to the secondary now a player and i i know all the names in the colleges so i'll talk he's a pro bowl safety out there making business decisions not being physical and how does that affect the young kid like a lemuel stinson would talk about that if your leader you're all pro safeties out there not wrapping up, trying to strip the ball, missing tackles, taking poor angles, and yeah. and totally being up soft as puppy shit out there. Yeah. And the freaking <laughs> fan base is watching this shit, and you're getting beat 41 to 20 by your rival. And then the next week, you're taking bad angles again, and you're celebrating, and you're talking as if something is going on that you're <laughs> we're all not privy to. How do you yeah. handle that? Well, they, they, I mean, in Chicago, I mean, these guys know, you know, if you're going to talk shit, you got to talk shit and you got to play up to the talking shit. That, exactly. and that's one thing. If I'm going to talk shit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play your ass like you ain't never been played before. And that's the difference between these guys. These guys talk, you know, they talking, no, but you ain't, you ain't bringing a hat, you know, and don't get me wrong. They can't leave with their head. They got all these new rules sitting with their shoulder, which, I mean, my shoulder still messed up from when I played. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and just imagine what they're going to feel like. My neck messed up. I mean, but the deal is you're going to receive these injuries, you know, as you play long in the league. But these guys don't hit. They take bad angles. They're always trying to strip the ball. I seen a guy the other day. I want to say it's 23 or 39, one or the two. He's trying to rip the ball out. Guy got another eight yards. On yeah, that's to no, 39. 39. You're talking about Eddie Jackson. Yeah, the safety Man, does on. it constantly. Our it's most crazy. physical and player then, is and, the corner, 23. He tackles. Yeah. Yeah, he tackles. Now, now one kid, the one week I uh, seen not too long ago, I think, if I remember, because I run it back. I, I look at the – if I see it on TV, I record it so I can look at it again yep. and see what they're doing wrong. Because, you know, sometimes you'll get run across somebody want to ask you something, and I'll tell them. But uh, – and, and not scared to tell them. Uh, uh, 23, yeah, he had a couple of hits. They had a nickel guy come in, a, a, a nickel guy that came in, and he hit somebody over the middle and flipped him. I say, now, nah, that's how you hit. You yeah. hit like that. But – we ain't got they not scared to run through us. They're not trying. Nah, then once they nope. get past Mac and that 94 and them few linemen right there, it's like we grabbing. All we're doing is grabbing. And yes. and and like I say, we love our Chicago Bears. We rep our Bears when we if you are a bear, if you Jim McMahon or you uh uh, uh Tom Zach or you guys that put that uniform on and, and go out there when it's cold with no sleeves on, back in the day, no, we're not playing like that. You're not playing like that. <laughs> no when the when the Texans come yeah. up there this week, 
They're supposed to ball against the Texas. They're supposed yeah. to ball against them. It's cold up there. We're from Texas. We're supposed to be shivering and shaking up here, you yeah. know? But, yeah. you know, I mean, like I say, Deshaun is a great, great, great quarterback, and I'll be looking to see what they do. I, I don't know who they brought in after Dubisky and, and what's his name, number eight, the kid. I mean, it's, it's so many guys that can play the game. I mean, Lord, I mean, we got to figure something out. We, we, I mean, Ted Phillips was there when I was there, and, and uh, he, he did a great job getting guys in and doing what he's doing. You know, Ted was a little, you know, uh, how would I say it? Oh, oh, let's <laughs> hear this. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Drop it in. We're trying Ted to get rid of Ted. Okay, I'm going to tell you this still. Ted okay. is a good guy talking to him <laughs> and a good guy going through it, but Ted can be an asshole too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Straight asshole too. You be like, hey, I don't give a shit what you're talking about. I'm not paying you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing it. So, you know, me and Ted had our ears in the house, and then we had some great things. You know, Ted has we had some great things. You know, I I, I love those guys. I love the McCaskies. I mean, Virginia was so sweet. Ed was so you know a great guy. Mike and uh uh George and uh 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 and the rest of those guys. That family treated me like I mean, coming took my grandmother. She came down for a game and uh, it was cold and she wanted to sit in the stands. They made sure that she was taken care of, made sure she had nice. hot chocolate, made sure they brought stuff. So, you know, I, I, I can't say nothing bad about the family because the family does a good job, did a good job for me, you know. But yep. like I say, Ted still has his moments. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're trying to get rid of Ted, the Grinch, I call him. That's a hint for a song you know, coming up. I'm just I'm gonna keeping be it 100, more. man. I'm that's just keeping it up. Ted, Ted kind no. of got a cut. Listen, I got a text from Cap uh, from ESPN Chicago. He said, from what he heard, Ted is going to retire after this. he's feeling the heat. And he's going to. The retire was in quotations, Olivia. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's that. <laughs> you're going to retire, aren't you, Ted? It's one of those. From, it's going to retire. Higher up. <laughs> he's going to go. If that's the case. That's the only way y'all go. Yeah, that's yeah the, right. That's the only way you guys <laughs> out of there. Nowhere, you know, what was that, that, duck? You're going to have that thick mustache and that old little funny little hair on him. Yeah. But he's good. I mean, to me, he's a good guy, so I, I can't say. He just didn't give me my last contract. I was still mad at him. Oh, about that, but, you know, he'll be all right. <laughs> no, he didn't take care of you. Yeah, Let me he, ask you real quick, Shane. I yeah. wanted him to double down because I deal with the tape, and it doesn't lie, right? You know that as a player because you're studying it. That's what's the story, not the narrative, not the stats, not – the 40 time, not how many catches, it's how they do it. How do they make Anybody can catch a fucking bubble screen and run for oh, 12, yeah. you know, get, get a good block and run. It's those guys that make plays down the field. On the defensive side of the ball, as you're saying, people coming up, wrapping up, tackling, physical. But you talked about Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn. Here's two guys that are highly paid, that are feeling the heat because the team is losing. However... Every time I pop on the tape and I'm their biggest defenders, not fanboy shit. This is reality on tape. He's getting chipped, doubled, tripled, held. He got a sack taken away because there was a ref calling some bullshit call. Oh, yeah. The whole story changes with referees and everything that's going on. Khalil Mack is a filthy fucking animal. He's... He's unbelievable the things that he does on tape, and he doesn't stop. He plays the run. He's not just a situational guy. Talk about that and how hard that is to be able to be playing the game but having everybody and their brother focused on you and to stop you to get their game going. No, that's hard. That's got to be hard for him. He's, he's, he's considered to me one of the best defensive ends in the league. Uh, a guy that can run to the ball, the guy that can chase you down from the back, guy that's not going to – he's he's 100 every time. He's not – he'll chase you down the field. So, uh, yeah, Max, exactly. to me, is, is, and, so, and both of those guys really are uh, uh, 94. He, 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 he's a beast yeah. too. And they got, some in, they got some inside guys that's working too. I don't really know them, like I say, but they work hard inside. But Mac to have that pressure on getting chipped, getting cut, and still playing. Sometimes he plays – I know he has to play injured sometimes because he getting <laughs> oh, chipped. Yeah. He getting cut. I mean, he's he, – they hitting, they double teaming him. So you know you gotta uh, you gotta think about how uh, <clears throat> Mac is. Uh, I mean they playing against Mac. You know they just don't. I mean and then ninety four is getting in a little bit now too because they yeah. they they're working with him. But oh, they, he that got freaking tackles in this. Up. 
who we gave up a, a DN somewhere. He went somewhere. I don't know who he was. Leonard but, Floyd. Uh, he went to the Rams. Yeah, they let him go. Oh, we, I mean, we we need to not give up who we have and keep the guys and bring in extra guys to keep going, man. I just, I, yeah. hey, sometimes I wish I was the GM. You know, sometimes I wish I was the uh, 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 defense coordinator. I mean, you know, it's just things you would do now that you just look at it and say, man, it's it's, it's crazy. Lemuel, one of the things that we talk about here, then we've had like Olin Krutz on and talked about it with him. You know, this is the NFL. This is the this is where every if you play football, this is where you want to be. And I mean, you're you're a football guy, and we hear the head coach Matt Nagy before the season started. He goes on the radio and he says to a couple of the guys, he goes, you know, during the off season, I had a couple of players come to me and say, Coach. We really want you to um, sit down with us after the games, and we want to be able to go over what we did wrong in front of everybody. And I'm like, I, I get a hold of Phil on the phone. And I'm like, how are they? How are they not doing that anyway? How are they not doing it anyway? So I mean, so as as a football guy, as a guy that's that's lived it, the guy that's been there, when you hear a current NFL coach. For the first time this year, year three is finally sitting down with his players and reviewing the tape. The in front uh, of the team. in front of the He's team, calling, holding oh, people no. accountable, holding people accountable. You're in year three. Hey, I, I was a rookie, Here and we go. Mike Dicker. <laughs> we was doing something in training, and we was doing something in practice and everything. And uh, oh, our Jimbo COVID, our Pro Bowl uh, uh, tackle. Uh, uh, Jimbo, Hall know, of Fame, got, yeah, Hall of Famer, yeah, Jimbo, great guy. I, I got a story about Jimbo, but he might be mad at me by telling. Uh, you but have to tell it now. He's, he's, he's yeah, nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had we had a game film on, and Dicker pulled out the film. He opened up, you know, because defense be on one side, offense be on the other side. And Dicker pulled up, uh, and he he walked in with his big cigar, be about what. That long, let me get my other finger off in there. That is, it'd be about it is. that long, you know. He coming up smoking a cigar, and and uh, he'll walk through the uh, doors, so he'll have a meeting with us, and then he'll go over to the offense side. Then one time he just opened up the meeting. He said, "We're gonna watch offense and defense," and we watch offense and defense, and we got to see on the offense side who was doing wrong, what yeah. you was doing, how you was doing it, and then on the defensive side, they got to see what we were doing wrong. Who was doing who was making the mistakes then you had to be accountable because you over there talking hey we did this on defense we did this but dog you didn't you didn't break you didn't make the tackle you missed right. the tackle so can we count on you so that's what dicker would dicker wants you to be accountable and, and and don't get me wrong dicker is back then he's a he's, he's a great coach i mean he's he's the guy that put that pressure on you and let you know what was going on but as a player didn't you covet that you know, to to be held accountable in front of your your teammates, and then you can see what you know what I mean. It, at, that team philosophy didn't isn't that something that you craved as a player? Oh yeah, yeah. We 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 wanted to make sure everybody, everybody knew yeah. who he's doing, how he's doing. That's why I always said something. I, hey, I'm getting two picks. Oh well, hey, stand. But you get the lemon heads. You get that pick. You know, that's my nickname, lemon head. You get you yeah. get lemon You get you get them too. I'm gonna get them too. I'm trying to get them too. I'm working hard for the team on the field, and I'm I'm gonna make sure that I do the best I can for that team. So for our team. So I, I I'm out there trying to put it on the line with the other guys, and you know we try to make sure we tell those guys to keep working hard. And that's what we now. That's what to me right now. Everybody's playing for themselves. You know they trying mm -hmm. not to get hurt. They playing not to you know make a tackle. They playing not to run. Now I number thirty two had me upset the first time I seen thirty two the running back. Yeah, I said, Montgomery. Man, I said, yeah, I said, man, he got my number. I say, so he got, he, he got, he got to handle this business. You got thirty-two on, you got a well three-two, baby. And uh, the first time he ran the ball, he was running a little shaky and a little scared. I was like, dude, he got my number on and running like this. They got to get somebody else. We missed two, two nine. Whoever the little running back, Tree Cohen, Tree Cohen. Yep. We, uh, hey, listen. I'm sorry because I I know no names. I'm bad with names. I'm, bad, I'm good listen. we that's fine. <laughs> I'm talk to do the names. You, you do the numbers. You, you, that's my boy. We know. Right we know who you're. We know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> we know. We know. But unlike he, he, some he, shows he, on radio, we know every player on the team. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 It's good to know that. <laughs> but you know, like I say, uh, he's he's a good back. We miss him. But 32 uh, last few games. 
he stepped that game up. I mean, he ran, he's put his foot in the ground, he got upfield oh. and got a few passes, and he had a few runs on it. So I was, I was, I was proud of him. And no, I'm, a, I'll tell you when you do bad, I'll tell you when you do good. That's the only way I was raised. That's what it is, dude. The coach continues to look for an identity, and today in his press, <laughs> in he's like, three. we find, we found our identity. Now I've been saying three two in honor of you, but really David yeah. Montgomery. Montgomery is your identity because of the tenacity and the toughness that you're seeing now a running back going behind an offensive line that gives a shit mm-hmm. doesn't they can't work you played with one of the best ever in Neil Anderson over oh, yeah. there with the Chicago Bears if they're not blocking for Neil Neil's going to get stuffed Neil's going to take some oh, yeah. shots Neil's going to make some plays cuz he he runs hard but Let's keep it 100 here. Your offensive line isn't doing their job. Your whole offense goes to shambles. And that's really what I see on tape is confusion, lack of aggressiveness, and the lack of fundamentals. And nobody's held accountable, like Bullets is saying here, and that you're talking about. So guys like David Montgomery have to like adapt, and they become a – a wild man because what i saw on tape with this game david montgomery's footwork i compared it to pele the soccer player this week i'm not a soccer guy but i watched pele play and i've never seen footwork and balance like that until i saw david montgomery and i'm a big big walter payton guy i love neil anderson i wasn't big on matt forte i didn't think he had it in here like mm-hmm. I see three two playing within here, there's yeah. a pride to it. Anyway, yeah. and, you and look at good. you look at these types of situations on offense, and Shane sharing that with no accountability, and then you see the record of this franchise. They've started at five and one. Now they're six losses in a row, five and seven. How does a team handle that? Have you ever been in a situation where you've been on a losing streak? And have you ever had to call out a teammate for their effort? Well, I've never called out a teammate for his effort. I mean, I've, I've always looked at guys and say, hey, man, we need to pick this up. Mike Singletary mm-hmm. would say, we need to, hey, we need to play. I mean, we were 6-10 and 10 one time. We were 6-10 and 10 that year after, I want to say it's 80 80- – None, ninety-one, something off of it. Now it's, it's a couple of years. We, we six, we got, we went six and ten, and Dicker walked on and said he didn't think we'd win another game. And uh, oh, that's when he that said kinda, it in the presser, right? Yeah, in the presser. Yeah, I was like, man, hold up, we gonna win some more games. What are you talking about? So we had to step our game up. Everybody was trying to make it, you know. But like now, these guys ain't. They, they, they don't. Nineteen eighty-nine. Bears 89, fans are yeah. telling. Look, eighty-nine. Kevin 89. Winston. Lucy, Richard yeah. Gordon, look, they're jumping in uh, there. They yeah, know. Yeah, there y'all go. There y'all go. Y'all know. <laughs> well, that's, after, that's after we came back. We was 12 and what? 12 and 4? I mean, yeah, 12 and 4, or 13 and 3, something off of now. We played good that NFC Championship year. But uh, we should have beat, like I say, we should have we should have beat the 49ers, but we did. And they came down and, and beat us then. But yeah, you got to have accountability. You got to make sure these guys are ready to step up and play the game. Sometimes they get their mind wrong and, uh, like I say, the, 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 it, it's it's the whole team in Chicago. It's right, from right. offense, defense, special teams, coaches, you know, GMs. You know, everybody got to be accountable because you know you're paying the guys a lot of money to do a job, and they're not doing it. What do you think of the BU philosophy instead of togetherness? So the coach preaches. If you don't know, he's like BU. He wants them all to be them. My thing is they've they've become selfish, and you see it on the football field. Well, when 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 you making a lot of money and you're not producing, mm-hmm. it's time for you to go. But then now they they may be handcuffs or, or whatever that they're they're making too much money. They don't want to get hurt. They want to do this in. They want to you know a lot a lot of these guys here want to show you know like. Hey, I'm the man now. You're really not the man. I mean, you you you're not you you're not the man because you're not doing your job on the field. Like I say, if you look at the game, you'll see how much of a a, a shit case it is. I mean, it's yeah. it's just it's just you look at it. What well, who is this on the team? I mean, we had an identity because we offensively we ran the ball. We put the ball in, in the exactly. running back hand. 
Neil Anderson, he going to get his. And defense, we're not giving up no more than 13 to 17 points a game. You know, we're not – it's not no 41 and 30. I know they throw the ball a little bit more now, but I wish they threw it back then like that. When I was going, I'll try to get more than the interceptions that I got then. But, um, like I say, it happens. <laughs> it does what it do. <laughs> but, yep, that's that's it. Lemuel, we got a lot of people in the chat room, and I think of, you know – People that obviously didn't even get a chance to see you play, but they're they're suddenly becoming big uh, Lemonhead Stinson fans here. But why don't you share with everybody like what you're doing now, and 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 you know just so keep everybody up to date with what you're doing. Man, I, I roll out of bed and fall out. I think I fell out and hit my shoulder and everything. <laughs> my body is messed up. I mean, I I'm, I ain't lemon here no more. I'm I'm lemon. Yeah, <laughs> I'm lemon right now, but. Uh, we do a lot of things. We try to uh, promote events for uh, organizations who can't raise money for themselves, the Lemon Stenson Foundation. And uh, we do a lot of things like that. Uh, we, 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 we raise money for organizations. We, we go visit kids. We do a lot of that type of stuff. And uh, we kind of gather around and talk to, you know, some of the guys, you know, uh, 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 is not doing so well. I mean, you know, we all have injuries. We all have, you know, headaches and injuries and stuff like that. So, uh, it's a little tough on us, but uh, everybody kind of stick together. So I'm, I'm at home most of the time. Uh, you know, like I said, I had two knees, uh, three three knee, knee surgery operations, and then wow. uh, you know, two on the left and one on the right. And my shoulder looked like it need to have surgery now, where it's dropping. But it's just you know, you look at it, I was 150 pounds when I played at that time, 150, 155, soaking wet. Holy and uh, I try to bring the hat like I bring it. And uh, yeah. you know, we had great guys. Donnell Wolfer was a great hitter. Sean yeah. Gale, uh, uh, Dave Durison, you know, L.A. Mike Richardson. So, you know, we had Vesty Jackson. So we had some guys that can Vesti, play the game. number 24. BJ. Yeah, 2-4, two, 2-4. Four, two, four. Yeah. Sean Gale, 23. 23, yeah. Sean had my number. That was my college number. Yeah. I was, I thought, they told me, hey, you can get 23 and get here. I get here, Sean Gale had 23 on. I'm like, hey, I'm going to get that number. That dude is a starter. <laughs> you reversed the numbers. <laughs> yeah, they reversed yep. the numbers. So that's how I got the 3-2. Number 32 in your program, number one in your heart. Let me tell my Lemuel Stinson story quick, yeah. Shane. Uh oh, what is it? What is that? What is so that? So listen, I you want, you want him some money. Yes. Ah, so let me, let me st- <laughs> <laughs> it's been spent by right now. <laughs> I listen, as you grow older and you, you become so loyal to the team, you obviously for me, you learn the players, you watch the games, and I was grateful enough to be able to watch you play. And there's someone asked me on one show, who was your under the radar player for the Chicago Bears that you loved more than maybe anybody that you would buy their jersey? I instantly said Lemuel Stinson. I just remembered <laughs> how you played the game with so much pride. You confident and you were small and I was small and I just loved the way you played the game and and I became such a huge fan. I didn't know you were even 150 pounds. That even makes it even more incredible the way this guy hit and exploded into tackles as well as track the football. You saw it in his open there. Um, but here's the story. So I'm 1990 and I'm playing in a Madden tournament, right? In uh-huh. Madden, it was 91, and I'm playing in a Madden. I had Wolford and Lemuel Stinson. And it was Mark Carrier was his rookie year, right? You yeah. play with Mark? Mark, great, great safety. <laughs> great safety, Mark. So I had you, Donnell, Mark Carrier, and I think it was Sean Gale, and then Dent and Armstrong. And I literally was waxing everybody and everybody said the bears suck hardball <laughs> fucking sucks you can't you can't and i had neil anderson i knew how to use him on a flare route and i'd get him matched up with the linebacker so he would get free and i'd lob it up to him and i would beat everybody so i'm mm-hmm. in the championship game and i'm playing this guy with the cowboys and he's trying to run emmett smith on me and we are not we are just stuffing it right so he's got to uh-huh. throw the ball and the greatest freaking play, it's coming down to the wire. I'm up by three. He's driving down. He throws a deep ball to Michael Irvin and Lemuel Stinson's on him. <laughs> and Stinson one hands picks it. 
and I take oh, it to the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I win the money. The money was 500 bucks, and I was hey. like, I never had that much money in my hand at that time in my life. And all I was doing is going down the hallways, going, Lemuel, Lemuel. <laughs> Everyone's like, who the hell is Lemuel? So everybody started picking up, and every time there was an interception now during the game, I used to uh -huh. say, Lemuel, and everyone would do it. So I love you, man. You oh, were my childhood. I, I, I said to Shane, it's like, oh, my God, this is like my guy, and he's on our show. What is better than that? And, and these millennials that don't know, I mean, you lived and died with the – we're in Connecticut. He's in upstate New York, and we're uh, living and dying with the ticker. I ended yeah. up making a good friend, like the ticker on the bottom of the television. We're watching oh, yeah. <laughs> Giants game, Giants Chiefs, and you're waiting. When Where's the Bears score? There it is. Bears are up 10-3. Yeah. You died for that. Then I ended up making a friend, and he would was the manager. Just like that, yeah, the tick the score would go. <laughs> he was the manager of this bar, and he had that giant satellite dish, and I made a deal with him. He was such a nice guy. He passed away. His name was Ray. He would videotape every Bears game, and I would watch it on delay like George Costanza, like, nobody tell me the score. I got <laughs> That's how crazy I was to see it. I, I don't yeah. have those tapes anymore. My ex-wife yeah. ended up burning them or something she's oh, crazy oh, oh. <laughs> what did you do <laughs> uh, what did she do i don't that's know a, that's a whole, that's other, a whole show, other show it's another it's show another you show. know like you're not sharing that jimbo covert story i don't think we're gonna go there either yeah. keeping it 102 <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll keep those two stories together. yeah those are off the air stories i was hoping i would get the jimbo covert story but who was the the toughest this guy on that team that you played and then i have a follow-up question about jim harbaugh that i want you to answer the toughest guy on that team for us hidden wise yeah was, was mike singletary the most humble person that you ever gonna meet uh, right he's not gonna curse he always got on me lemon lemon be, no no don't say that don't say that no no lemon but uh <laughs> uh he's um uh, the most humble person but he's the hardest hidden guy and uh, you know, uh, Otis Wilson was a beast. Otis Wilson was a oh. beast. I seen him. He he left handed. So uh, true story. Vince Tobin mm -hmm. said something to Otis one day in uh in a meeting, and he told Otis he say, uh, "Take it on with your right shoulder, Otis." And 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 Rodas was you know those guys were so bad back then. They laying back. <laughs> Otis was asleep in the meeting, and everybody oh, else Mike sitting in the front by the next to the coach Tobin. And we sitting in the middle as the rookies right here, me, David Tate, Mickey Pruitt, and Otis Wilson said, huh? He woke up like, what? Take it on with my right shoulder. And he said, uh, uh, Vince told him, told Iceman uh, Dave McGinnis, he say, tell him uh, tell him what I told you. Uh, tell him what I said, uh, Dave. And uh, Dave was telling me, he said, well, he looked up at the play. He say, did he fold? Because Otis liked to hit with his <laughs> left shoulder. So Otis hit him and buckled him with his left shoulder. He said, did he fold out? He said, well, I did my job then. And went back to sleep. I said, "Oh, this is real." That's how you know. Them, that's how you know. Eighty-five bears. Them guys was so they they didn't take nothing. They didn't take mm -hmm. nothing. And some of those guys still there. You know, when we got there in '88, he kept Dicker kept thirteen to fourteen rookies on that year. Oh, oh really? So that's what made us play our butts off. You know, and uh, and and we beat some of those guys out. But uh, like I say, uh, Otis Wilson. Oh, he's he was a beast. Otis was a beast. Uh, Fridge was a mean character. Richard Dent, probably one of the best ever. It's nothing you can take. Richard Dent, I mean, in my eyesight, I remember Richard Dent told me, uh, my first time when I got my check, he said, Uh, you need me to cash your check? And I like, Cash my check, can't catch my check. He said, No, nah, I got it in the I got it right here in the locker. <laughs> I said, oh, I said, yeah, you shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> I'm going to go to lunch on you every day. <laughs> but yeah, they had them right, they had some things, boy. They had a lot of things. Missed the locker room, missed those guys. Uh uh love my teammates, but yeah, like I said, it's 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 a great thing. But Mike Singletary, probably one of the meanest, hardest hitting guys. I seen him hit a Green Bay game, he hit the the center, the fullback, 
<laughs> and buckled the, buckle the running back all in one play. And Vince Tobin ran that play over and over again. And I remember that to to like it's yesterday. That's the only thing I think I remember sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you never forget. Yeah. You never forget, yeah. You you brought up probably the longest tenured bear ever when you think about it. You brought up Tony Medlin, the equipment guy. He's still still <laughs> there. T Med. T Med. Everybody that all the Bears players that we have on now, they all have uh T Med stories. Do you have any? Oh yeah, T Med the one called me in the office when we had to go when uh, against the Atlanta game. Yeah, and, uh, he called me in the office and said, "Stinson, you got a phone call." And he's just smiling. And I'm like, "What the hell?" Y'all I'm just smiling. I said, "I thought something was wrong." And I run off of him. And I'm jogging off in there after right after a meeting. You know, we had just went through the press and the media. We went to our meeting, and then we came back downstairs, and we was walking to our lockers, and we was gonna go media uh, uh, media again. And then uh, he said, "I had a meeting that that was Tony Miller." And, and but Tony's a good guy. He always made sure we stay on P's and Q's. He made sure that uh, as rookies we had what we needed, and yeah. uh, he made sure that we uh, stayed out of trouble. He let us know the ins and the outs for us not getting in trouble in the city and all that. And Walter was great on that. Now, when you say Walter, Walter was like our, our mentor, yeah. uh, all the rookies. He made sure that we didn't get in no trouble. He made sure we didn't do this. He made sure we didn't do that. So, uh, And we always went to his little uh, Club 34s, if y'all know that. <laughs> That was a nice spot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let me ask you this about Jim Harbaugh, especially with the coaching uh, stability here in Chicago. Here's a guy coaching Michigan. You played with the guy. What kind of man is he? What kind of teammate was he? And he's is he somebody that you would trust with this franchise and trying to get back to the level of accountability, character, and toughness that the Chicago Bears deserve? Uh, Jim is, uh, that type of guy. Jim is, Jim was a quarterback. Just here, this, this is a funny story. Jim mm-hmm. was the backup quarterback and Jim McMahon was there. Tom Zach was there and Jim was sitting on the sideline. Jim was just scratching and itching to get in the game. He just ready to go in the game. He's like, he on, you know, don't get me wrong. Maybe some kids on Ridley, but that's how Jim looked at me. He looked like he was on Ridley. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like, he, he was ready to go. You know, it's fire. <laughs> But you know, and, and Harbaugh, he throw that ball. He he throw it his hard too. You intercept his ball, you'd be like, man, why is dude throwing so hard? But it was it was there. But I think Jim will be a great fit in Chicago because the love of it that he had. That's just saying that same way I thought that Ron Revere would have been oh. a great fit in Chicago because he loved it. And and we got guys that are coaches that they love Chicago. Mike Singletary. I mean, we, the, these guys can come together and make a make a strong coaching staff and a thing. You know, you bring Mike Singletary in there; he's going to be mental. You bring Jim Harbaugh in there; he's going to run a great offensive scheme. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the college game is a little different. You know, it. You know, NFL is so much faster than a, than the college game. It, it, it's unreal because when you get up there, it happens so quick because you look at so much film and you do what exactly. you do. Exactly. But uh, because you may have a receiver over here that's not that good, but you got a receiver over here that's good. You can you can you can play that over there. You can let him be one on one. You can have a running back that's good and a tight end that's good, and then you play that. But uh, Jim Harbaugh, I, I think he'll be a good fit because the McCaskies know him. Uh, he's a good guy. Uh, uh, oh, the true story was. See, that's that 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 yeah. A couple of hits I had. I had to get back. <laughs> so I'm trying to listen to that. The Jim Harbaugh story. He, he ran down on kickoffs because he was so wanting to get in the game and he didn't play. Coach Dicker put him down on kickoff, and you never seen – hey, that kid – hey, I say kid, he older than me. He ran down that field like he was a receiver trying to get to that tackle and make a tackle because that's what – his heart was in it. Jim is a fiery guy, you know, and you look at his brother, Coach the, uh, uh, Ravens. I mean, he can do the job. I think he can do the job. I think Ron Revere could have done the job. And I think Mike Singletary can do the job uh, because they're going to bring guys in there that love Chicago. And you got to have somebody that loves Chicago and want to ride and die for them. You know, sometimes you get guys just, they just, they just, yeah, you know, some, some guys just getting a paycheck, you know, so. How long would it take a coach nowadays to get fired if they drafted a quarterback in the first round and put him on special teams to run down on kickoffs? Oh. <laughs> hey, 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 wait. With Dicker, hey, with Dicker, you don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dicker, hey, Dicker, Dicker, Dicker drafted Donnell Wolford in the first round, drove him around in the cut. Donnell came in, and and Dicker was so high that Donnell one time, and Donnell uh, 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 said, man, 
what's wrong? What's wrong with it? I said, man, just keep playing, man. It ain't no problem. You're going to be all right. And, uh, but uh, Dicka, when it, Dicka was a totally different character, you know. Something, I don't know what he's doing. I think I think he's going through some things right now. He's getting older and his mind is going, or I don't know. But, you know, he's getting older. But like I say, back in the day, Dicka was the guy that, will you know make you work hard but like you say who puts a uh a quarterback <laughs> yeah. on kickoff yeah dick did yeah <laughs> like, if we can go back and find a film he's on that kickoff yeah. he's right beside me just ready i looked at him like yeah, <laughs> you, gonna, <laughs> you gonna beat me down there where you going <laughs> so. oh my god yeah i love hardball because i really think we've we've talked we had doug plank talking with us i've always said this uh, and no offense to your boy i call him millhouse that's ted phillips i just think <laughs> under him millhouse has never grown up and the bears are suffering because they don't do things football first they do things yeah. stupidity in regards to business first this corporate kind of decisions there's not football decisions you need football people in there with the heartbeat of the importance of Chicago and the Chicago Bears and what it means to be accountable, blue collar, tough, all that shit sounds stupid to, to people, but the reality is the shit that you've done with Mark Tressman, we can go on and yeah. your boy, they they supposedly hired, then he didn't, uh, you brought him up, uh, Dave, Dave McGinnis. McGinnis yeah. Dave McGinnis, yeah. then they hired Jerron because McGinnis was pissed that the, uh, the business sucks. They got to get a football person in. I've said this before it's becoming vogue now. We've said this eight years ago or seven years ago now on the old network we were on. Somebody that loves the team, whether it be Gary Fensick, Mike Singletary as a president, uh, Peyton Manning, if he understands what I believe he understands the history of the Chicago Bears and what it means to be a bear, you got to get uh, Doug Plank, whoever, somebody that knows football first that is going to tell the manager or anybody in the organization, we're making football decisions. It might not be popular, but we're taking Deshaun Watson and his skinny ankles. I don't give a yeah. fuck. He wins. I am going to go out there and draft this running back because he plays with heart and passion. This receiver's loafing on 20 plays. Yeah, he's fucking talented as hell, but I don't want that cancer in my locker room. I want someone that's going to go out there and play the game like this kid Mooney plays the game, number 11. That's how you, that's how you play the football game. And, but and you, you want to be you want to be dogs. You want to go out there and you want to if you if, and and we're backed in the corner. And, yeah. and we're not in Chicago right now. We're backed in the corner, and we're not even coming out. We're gonna exactly. stay in that corner. We're just getting beat down, beat down, beat down in that corner, and it, it's tough. I mean, it, it hurts because you know back then, and even the guys before back then. If you talk to those guys, hey, our heart is in Chicago. That's what we have. Our heart is in Chicago. So I mean, we yeah. just gotta, we just gotta, we gotta do something, man. And this, it even I mean. We go five and one. Really, we're not playing nobody. You can see it back then. We was bad at winning games. Yeah. Uh, but then it came down to the meet our, meet our schedule. And Green Bay, I got Green Bay fans and move from West Wisconsin up here now. And they Green Bay, Green Bay, yeah, yeah. And got a mass bear suck. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Come on. But, you know, that's that's them and Green Bay, little cheese heads, you know. <laughs> we all right with them. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. How big is that rivalry, and was it for you guys? What did it mean to you guys? Oh man, uh, just it was big. If you lose in Green Bay, you lose Green Bay. I, I don't think they like me too much in Green Bay, but uh, you know, I covered I covered Sterling. Sterling was a great receiver. I mean, probably one of the best in the league, Sterling Sharp. And uh, he always had this thing where he used to run up against us, and and if you get on Sterling, he'll bump you yeah. off. So short, thick. I mean, he's, he's stocky, so he bump you out. So I never played him like bump and run because he'll knock my little ass across the uh, sideline somewhere. But uh, we always played with him uh, tight and everything. So uh, Sterling was great. Uh, Harris, the defensive end, he was a, he was a beast. Oh. He always talked. Oh, he talked the whole game. He I don't dumped know, Jim hey, McMahon. Dumped yeah, him. I don't, hey, I don't yeah. even know if he talked. He, he talked so much, you never know what. Uh, 
what do you do? You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's just crazy. He just talk, 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 talk. So, um, but like I say, Green Bay, we, we couldn't stay in Green Bay. Not at that time. Philip Epps, all them guys, you know, we just couldn't stand them. If we knew the rivalry, and hey, you wouldn't come to Chicago and beating us, you know, and that's how it yeah. happened. That's they'll win. We'll, we'll win here, but y'all, and they may win there, but we're trying to beat you down there too. So, yeah, it meant boy, something. It'd be, it'd be nice to get that back. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 back. It, it, yeah. I, mean I, I think Rogers is a great quarterback. I like yeah. Rogers. I yep. mean, he, he, he know how to get in there. He's not a throw it, he not, but I'll tell you what. We will be trying to knock Rodgers out and get the next quarterback in to see how good he is. That's how we'll play that game. We're trying to knock him out and see who the next quarterback is going to be because the next quarterback ain't that good because he'll be playing in front of Rodgers. So that's how we thought on the football field. You know, not no bounty, not no none of this here. We just played hard-nosed football, and we was the black and blue division, and we like to, you know, hit people and knock them out. Well, I don't know how much longer we have you. Are you good to stay with us, or do you oh, have to go? You, you got me. I mean, just let me know how long you want to stay. I mean, <laughs> you know. Since we're yeah. going to get into our 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 segments this week, and you're welcome, you're welcome to stay and play along. But before we do that, I always ask every guest, "Can you do a station ID?" And that is you saying, "Hey." This is your boy Lemuel Stinson, former Chicago Bear, and you're listening to my boys Shane and Phil on the Tape Never Lies Network. Can you do that, or is that a lie? Tape Never Lies Network. Tape, ne- ne- tape, oh, tape Never Lies Network. Shane and uh, Phil. Yeah, Shane and Phil. Okay, let, let's see what we got. I'm going like to isolate on you. Uh-huh. I'm going to put all the pressure on you. That oh, boy. You're lowered up. Your brand. Hey, this is Lim- Lemuel Stinson. Hold, from on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I want to get. <laughs> he invested in already. He took off early on coverage, Harbaugh. Let's go back up. <laughs> Harbaugh, Harbaugh was <laughs> jumping. That's a breakup. That's a breakup. <laughs> All right, I'll count you down when you're ready. You ready? Wait, wait. wait. Tell me one more time what I got to say. This is former big cornerback Lemuel Stinson, and you're listening to my boy Shane and Phil. On the Tape Never Lies Network. The Tape Never Lies Network. All right. All right. You want me to put it on the screen for you? Ready, to remember you're the no, you're ready. Tape yep. Never Lies Network. Three, two, one. This is your boy, Lemmy Stenson from the Chicago Bears, number 32 in your program, number one in your heart. You listen to uh, Shane and Phil on the Tape Never Lies Network. Boom. Oh. This guy. Look at this guy. Now, hey. Knocking it out of the park. I know I said bear. something that you didn't say. <laughs> no, you, no, you did it perfect. You did it. I like the ad-libbing. Number one in your heart. I used to say that, too. Hey, that's it right there. <laughs> Number right, 22. I want, to say, I, I want to say I love my Chicago fans, man. I love y'all. Y'all love y'all. Thank y'all for supporting me and everything. So, you know, appreciate hey. it. Big plays are nice. They're good. We need more of those. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> wouldn't that mm-hmm. be nice, Coach? <laughs> Every week we play a game, level. it's called Bear Up, Bear Down. And the Bear Up is the opposite of what you play. You know, Bear Down is normally, let's bear down, Chicago oh, bear. bear. But Bear mm-hmm. Down is negative, though. We're going to say the Bear Down of the game, and then we're going to say the Bear Up of the game. So that would be the player that stood out in the game. So with the player that stunk up the field and the player that stood out, we always start it like this with the song, our original song, Lemuel. Philotosian, Shane Marshall, The Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up, a bear down. It's draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up. This week, draft Dr. Phil. And Shane Marsaw, the smartest man. 
their ups and their downs of the week. Oh yeah, bear up, bear down, the mule. Do you want to be? Do you want to start us off? Because we always do the negative first. You can go first or last. Hold on, we got a, we got our get other guy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he was showing up tonight. I thought maybe he had COVID with Claudio. Our whole crew is sick. <laughs> Keys! What's going on, Chance? Cars! How you doing? There he is, Lemuel. This is Matt Carstensen, our nerd, our resident What's nerd. What's up, man? How you doing? Were you like Matt, that hat? You... Like that hat? Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he's wearing it this week, knowing Cars. I mean, I am as down as I've been as a fan for <laughs> quite some welcome time. To the, welcome to the but, club. You know. Give me about five minutes and I can get myself going somewhere positive with it again, for sure. <laughs> Nerd alert! <laughs> Listen, since the mule's new to the game, I don't want to put pressure. He only knows numbers. He doesn't know names half the time. So we're going to start off negative, and we're going to start with you, Cars, so he understands the game. And then you just have to say, the player... You are my bear down. So, Cars, you're going to start us off. Thanks for coming in tonight. Your fans were worried about you, but now you're here. I was just texting <laughs> Shane. Where are Cars? Here's what's up, Cars. Look yeah, at I've been eight, resetting eight. passwords. It's a, an exciting day here in the Carsonson <laughs> household doing all my tech nerdy stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh, trust me. Always I know. good. Always good. So, we're going to snake it down. Cars is going to start. Then me. Then Lil. Then Shane. Shane will then come back with a positive bear player. Lemuel will come with this positive. I'll come with mine and then end with Cars. Are you ready, Cars? Who was your bear down? I mean, uh, there's a ton, I guess. Uh, it's really tricky for me to say. I think, uh, wow, I can't pick just one. It's, it's a struggle this week. You know, I, I, but I think, I think for me, it's, it's going to be uh, Robert Quinn. I think, oh, you know, really? I've made a lot of excuses. He's flashed a lot. He's shown close, but you're not getting 30 million guaranteed to get close to a quarterback. You got to put him on the ground at some point. And uh, one, one sack through the season. And it really showed against, you know, I, I tweeted it the other day. How telling was it that uh, when Detroit needed a play, Everson Griffin and uh, <clears throat> Okaru stuck a, a hit yeah. up and Mac and Quinn were nowhere to be found. So uh, Robert Quinn is my bear down of the week. Yeah, I I liked what I saw from Robert on the, the tape. I just think that they were going to think a step game. I don't think he's healthy yet. Quite honestly, I think there's. I know. I, to me, he's still playing with a little plays, hitch there. He, yeah, he got held and tackled by uh, what's his name, the left tackle, twice. Decker, Taylor is that? Decker, yeah. Taylor Decker, and, and the other time he's coming and he's one step late. So yeah, I don't. First think time I was, I'm a little shocked that you went Quinn there. I'm really in. You know, it's it, uh, close doesn't cut it, right? At some point, you're not getting paid to. You're getting paid to make a play, not almost make a play, not get close, not, you know, whatever. Yep. And, you know, look at – he's got a couple of uh, of counter moves, but, like, at some point he's, he's, he's a guy who's flashed closing speed his entire career, and that is just not here. Like, it's just not – it's not happening. So – like I get, I get that he's he's getting close and he's generating some rush, but again, you know, you gotta you gotta put up more than that. You gotta you gotta get to the guy. All right, we'll finish it out. Show Lemuel how you do it. So Robert Quinn is my bear down. There you go, Robert Quinn. I'm surprised. You chat, you chat. You could long and bear down as. Zach Bradley went with the rookie. Listen, my bear down is very easy this week. It's consistently consistent, <laughs> and it's every time I pop on the tape. Could easily go with a receiver, 
but that almost cost you the game or did cost you the game. But I'm going to say this. Charles Leno, you I are... tweeted it and called it. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> did you call my bear down? I called your bear down and I called uh, uh, the barber's bear up of Mooney midway through when the second <laughs> Leno got that penalty after the turnover. Oh, I knew my exactly God. Where you were going. Listen, the penalty, the false start, the holding penalty on third and one after you got nine. And, and then you're getting the first down and you're, you're going to put this game away. He gets a hold. Then the freaking laziness on the sack. A spin move that Everson Griffin has done it four times in this game. And Charles is getting beat. So are you not ready for it? The th big moment in the game, he's, oh my God. And then Lemuel, I've done tape breakdown and you played on the professional level. I've never in the history of my life saw a toss play to the left tackle side where a left tackle blocked and touched nobody until this <laughs> game. It is the most amazing thing. That link I sent you, I had mm -hmm. to put music to it because I couldn't believe what had transpired in that game. And Charles Leno, lack of effort. They're running read option. Lemuel and it's automatic pull so the left tackle all he has to do is step inside and get up on the backer and this fucking loaf jog trot just got me so agitated because Mitch does it right all he has to do is just step and get in front or just wall be a wall just be a wall don't be a wall he loafs out there and the linebacker just sh Easy shoots up the gap like it's JV football in on a Saturday morning. It's pathetic. There's my long to tell you that Charles Leno, you are my bear down again. That's five weeks I've counted that Charles Leno, number 72, has taken that prize. Maybe I get Josh E. Shane to make Leno a bear down trophy and <laughs> we'll send it to him. We'll send yeah. it to him. Braggs can give it to him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Lemuel, you oh. can give a number. We'll give the name. Who is your bear down this week? Hey, I'm going to tell you what. I got a couple of numbers. <laughs> and they, they all in the secondary. Because that's, <laughs> that's what I play. The whole secondary is my bear down. Because wow. you got to take a pride in the game. You got to yeah. go handle your business, and you got to hit, and you got to tackle, and you you got to you know read the ball, intercept the ball, we, we play the ball. You know they they no technique right now. None of those guys are playing technique. They just nice. out there playing, and to me the whole secondary. So when they get prepared to play the Texans, they need to they need to handle their business. They need to come up and uh uh, uh take it. So that's my bear down. The whole secondary, corner, corner, safety, safety. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now I tell them. I tell them to their face. They don't matter. They, 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 ask Tim Matt Ted Phillips. He'll, say, he'll know. He'll say, yeah, "I don't want to ask Ted." <laughs> except when he's walking out of it, I'll ask him, "How was his stay?" I'm glad you're gone, Ted. <laughs> Retired. Fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. I miss Claudia. <laughs> if you're just. You know, the barber has COVID. That's why he's not on the show tonight. And we got a special guest, Four Bears Corner, Lemuel Stinson, one of my favorite players all time, is on the show tonight. He's joining us for Bear Down. Look at that. His Bear Down was the entire <laughs> secondary. He pulled the cars and Phil. He went 1, A, yep. B, C, D. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this week you could have gone through the alphabet twice. Yeah. It's been pretty much all right. I mean, that, that's how bad of a game this was. <laughs> Shane Marsaw, who do you yep. got? Well, before I get to mine real quick, got a little shout out here. Anthony Mendez. Oh, Happy yeah. birthday from everybody here. Number 38. Happy birthday, Anthony Mendez. Yep. Yep. He's a so, TTNL patron, I believe. Too. He is. 
Well, before Le, before Lemuel pulled the okie doke on me and took every, <laughs> took the whole secondary, that's where I was going to go to. But <laughs> I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go to the other side of the ball and talk about uh, you know as bad as the Bears played, they still had a chance. And the guy that we see every week chirping yes. away Chirp. on Twitter and is pissed off about his contract well yes you had you had the ball in your hand in money time and you went out of bounds <laughs> about a foot yep. and a half short of the uh fourth down marker Allen robinson Wild. that was that was tough i mean phil you saw it if he keeps if, if he he's got a chance to to house it oh my god if the he's corner paying, falls down yeah Lemuel. yeah the corner yeah. fell 24 the rookie yeah, right I remember he that, fall yeah. he's he has no idea what's going on. He doesn't. He turns the wrong way. He makes a wide U-turn. As a receiver, you know you got yep. to feel that guy in your back. There's nobody there. Turn right. and get up the field. Turn sees. Yeah. He sees the corner on the ground, and he still gets wide and yep. steps out of bounds. Yep, number oh, twelve. He doesn't. The... All he had to do is dive at that point. When you yeah. make a mistake like that, get that first. Um, and Lem- the rest Lemuel, like you said, if you're gonna if you're gonna talk, you gotta be you gotta have the ability to go out there and back it up, and yeah. you can't you can't falter on a money down right there. I mean, g- game on the line, fourth down. You know, it's right there. He he puts it to, to makes it fourth down, I should say. But um, I don't know. It's Allen Robinson. I love the player or like the player, I guess I should say. But uh, if you're gonna be chirping all year long on social media and having your agent do a lot of work for you on Twitter by calling other players out and all of that ridiculousness, you better come through when you got the ball in your hands in money time. And number 12 did not. I mean, it was a, let's be, let's be honest. It was the, to me, a huge turning point because I I was feeling pretty good about maybe Mitch taking them down there and uh, punching it in for the score. And they didn't. So Allen Robinson, for Lemuel, number 12, you are my bear down. He and Eddie Jackson are suffering from the same yeah. thing. Yep. I don't want to toot my own horn, but when t- when it push comes to shove, I'm not doing it on the field right now, right? Like, yep. To Lemuel's point, you can't be sitting there talking about you don't get any targets, you don't get any – maybe you are getting targeted, you're just in the wrong place because uh, oh. you certainly aren't tackling guys like you're supposed to. So. Yeah. Big yeah. times players make big time plays in the in big, big time, time games. moments. Games. Games. Oh, yeah. And he totally Lemuel Stinson did it. He picked off that pass to Michael Irvin down the sideline and Hell yeah. house called it. <laughs> Phil won 500. 500. <laughs> Lemuel! <laughs> hey. Talk about playoffs? You can't. <laughs> Not this team. Listen, we're going to go back around. We'll play this for. T- Till we hear the bear up. Phil Atosian, Shane Marshall, the Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up. There you go. There bear it is. Up, Shane Marshall. Back to you, bear up. Who do you? And bear? how how perfect is this for me? I get to pick Bear up first, and I get to do it with the number of our guest. It's number Very thirty-two good. for me tonight. Uh, for my Bear up, uh, very, very, uh, very, uh, very uh, easy. Uh, David Montgomery. He he was <laughs> Mister Everything, and the only person that could stop him was our head coach, and he did. <laughs> he he made that halftime adjustment. He's like, David, you're doing too much. We don't want to establish the run anymore. We're going to come out here and start slinging it. And he, he neutered him. I, For whatever reason, I we, we've seen this play out many, many times. He had, what, 11 carries at halftime, and he finished the game with, with 17. And we're, we're leading the game by 10 points with, what, 432 left? Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. Big plays are nice. They're good. We need more of those. Well, Lemuel, you talked about it. You talked about playing with that edge, playing, you know, be, being that dog. Right now, I'm seeing that in uh, number 32. I think he's starting to believe they've made some changes on the offensive line. I think that that's given him a little bit of confidence that he knows that 
if he gets to the hole, he's going to be able to get through the hole. I think he's starting to believe in those guys up front just a little bit more. Unfortunately, the head coach seems to be restricting him now. But um, to me, it was clear. I think probably every one of you guys, if I didn't take David Montgomery, was going to take him. So, uh, David Montgomery, you are my bear up. Yeah, great choice. That was my guy. Uh, I thought he ran with such heart, passion, and desire. The footwork, though, honestly, go watch yeah. the tape never lies. It's out. Those of you patrons, you are seeing both the offensive side and the defensive side. If you're not a patron subscriber, go to www.thetapeneverlies.com. Become a patron subscriber before December 31st, $7 a month. There's 457 of you. We're trying to get 500 before Christmas so we can have the patron show every week. We're going to 461. Four, so we're up. We're yeah. up. Nice. Look yeah. at that. So 457 yeah. before the show started. It's Ted Phillips just bought one because Lemuel's been <laughs> Lemuel's been uh, pumping about the show. <laughs> he can afford to buy a couple more though, right? <laughs> he held that last contract from Lemuel, so that's where he just spent that money. <laughs> Lemuel, we got the business out of the way. Who's your bear up from this game? Well, I know I'm gonna take somebody, but I got to go. I'm. It's easy for me. All right. Well, I'm gonna leave him because I know the other. I know somebody else gonna take that one, so I'm gonna go with 94. Robert Quinn. So you, yeah, this might be the opposite. first time. Yeah, this yeah. might be the first time we've ever had a bear up and bear down be the same player. Hey, hey, Holy the same shit! Player. It's fine. We should just isolate on the two and let you battle it out here. Hey, go bro. ahead, talk about it. He. he He's getting chipped. He's getting double teamed. He's 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 he's, he's, he's taking a slack from uh, uh, Mac. What 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 they doing to Mac over there? So I I see him working and trying to get there and doing the things and getting around the edge, but it, it, just a little bit more aggressive. And I think he'll be okay. He he has it looked like he had to fight in him. That and I saw a couple of plays that he made and I thought that he he's doing pretty good. Now as far as the the, the couple of runs that happened on him. Yeah, you're going to get that. You know, sometimes Richard Dent didn't make a tackle. Sometimes he did make a tackle. You know, it was right. like, you know, Trace Armstrong didn't make a tackle, you know. But he's not going to he's not gonna have a great game every time. But he, he he shows up to play. He shows up to play. To me, he shows up to play a little bit. Now, I could easily oh. pick Mac, but I think, you know. Oh, no, you could have picked Mac. You're the yeah. big-time guest here tonight. Yeah. Former yeah. Bear. Well, you know. I'm, I'm a guest, you know. <laughs> I'll Listen, say guest. We're, we're always no, feeding next the guests. I'll be here next week for you. <laughs> there you go. Well, we love fans. Love you in the chat. We're gonna okay, get you love. the. We're gonna we're gonna get you the freaking roster. You're gonna study it over the week. You're gonna know everybody's <laughs> college. Oh no! And get, did it to Claudio I back in the day. Tests. You're you're in a lot of trouble. Phil cheats on his tests. Every yeah. day. <laughs> hey, hey, Listen, hey, hey, I agree with. I agree with. Le put it up on the tape. Never lies. That other net other people are going after Quinn and Mac, and they just absolutely don't know what the hell they're talking about. The whole game plan for Detroit was to take away Mac, chip on Robert Quinn as much as they could and uh Akeem Hicks did not play a great game effort wise fundamental standing up it was a loafs in there so I'm just keeping it a hundred with Akeem play better I know he didn't play against Green Bay he can't, but there was opportunities there and Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack played great I love I, I agree I'm sorry even when I questioned cars i love cars but i was with you so now you have to say it robert quinn you are my bear up <laughs> who i say to me go ahead lemuel that's on you robert, oh robert <laughs> quinn you who my bear up <laughs> there, there you go. go see i hold everybody there accountable like dick 90, 94 94. <laughs> hey, it's good to remember the number. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Listen, 
I'm going to go in a certain way. I want to go Mac, but it's too easy for me. Should I do that? Because I just am tired. Just watch the tape. Go tape never lies. Become a patron. I only put one defensive play up there this week, and it was Khalil Mack's sack. Yeah. And it just tells you, become a patron so you see the whole truth about Mac. Because the effort there, I'm just going to... Number 52 played his ass off. They're getting chipped. He's getting held. He's getting full teamed. On one, they do a whole mirror drill, Lemieux. And they take the left tackle and the running back, and they both mirror him and shade him out. And Stafford rolls to his right to set up. Everything in the protection is to go away from Khalil. That's how you know how dominant a player is. And it's always there with Khalil Mack. I, I'm watching the tape. There's a play where he just absolutely destroys the whole thing. And he he jukes the tight end and beats him so easily. And then Adrian Peterson, who's one of the oh. greatest <laughs> blitz pickup backs you'll ever see. I mean, this guy will put it in your... He puts Adrian Peterson like he's a, a wind in a sail. Just whoop, goes by him. And then Matt Stafford throws the ball right at Adrian Peterson. Otherwise, that's a sack there. Then there's an intentional grounding that they didn't call where Mac is just destroying. So it's worth the watch. Don't listen to these haters. Khalil Mack, you are my bear up this week. Here you go, Lemuel. You were right. I should have taken it. <laughs> go ahead, Cars. I don't want to I didn't want to steal your your positive player, but go ahead. Uh mine is Sam Mustafer. You know, it's it's, you. it's been it's been really nice to see the interior of the offensive line blocking people and opening holes. <laughs> what a novel concept. It's it's super crazy. Uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate right now. I was texting Shane earlier. It's unfortunate right now. We found four offensive linemen who could probably play, and all four of them play the center or guard position in bars, <laughs> Mustafer, uh, James Daniels, and Cody Whitehair. So someone is going to have to probably get moved at, at some point. I would put Whitehair at left tackle tomorrow. And start I grooming think that I'd guy. I look him at right. I don't. No, I, would, I think I'd, he. Go ahead. I, I would just be interested on that one. But um, Mustafer has been a revelation uh, at that position. It's allowed Cody to go somewhere where he's better and not worrying about the snaps. Uh, he's a lot more physical. He's definitely a, a you know kind of a, a setter of the tone for that offense. You know, you mentioned it last week when. When guys are getting chippy, it's Mustafer and Bars that are showing up going, you're not you're not touching our guy while well, you know Charles Leno is talking about the B plus he just gave himself when he's picking himself <laughs> off the ground after missing a spin move. So um helping everybody Sam Mustafer up is my bears yeah. up uh for for the week. <laughs> the only bears up Leno has gotten is him helping the quarterback yeah. up. And he's like, That's our bear up this week. <laughs> he's unbelievable. Absolutely. I'm I graded Bars off. I thought he was awful in this game. He had a two plays that he played really well, but fundamentally and technically he wasn't. Mustafer was a great choice. This kid's growing up before your eyes. There's the big touchdown run is Mustafer getting the crucial swinging ass, get in the way, deliver and stay your ground. He does a great job scoop blocking that nose guard getting a crease right in for him guys i lost him and we lost him yeah <laughs> he's frozen <laughs> i don't know if he can hear there he goes he bounces out but yeah no it's i think you make a great point cars because it's this is exactly the type of thing that the chicago bears need and they they needed to discover a guy like that because i mean obviously Offensive line is going to be a main focus to whoever is going to try to fix this issue heading into the offseason. We don't really know what's going to happen. Are they going to clean house? You know, is, is pace going to be here? It, it, yeah. We'll figure all of that stuff out. But for them to, to bring this kid in as an undrafted free agent, and, and to, to Phil's point, too, you know, Alex Bars, I thought, did struggle too, but <laughs> they've bounced this kid. Everywhere. Everywhere. Right. And I don't think that, that that's something we've seen in Chicago. I understand you want to preach versatility, and that's that's the, the quickest way to get you on the field. But, man, it's at some point 
you have to be able to to settle into one or two spots rather than playing three of them, you know, week to week to week. And that's I think that that's going to part of what is stunting his growth. And you know, worst case scenario, I think he can be a a quality backup that you you bounce around. You know, cars. You mentioned the the four guys. Like I when I texted you back in that reply, that that gives us three starters and a backup on the Finally. inside. Yeah, exactly. Finally. So. But um, yeah. no, it's it, it's nice that they have some young options there, young versatile options. But to me, if you're going to put the spotlight on a guy, Mustafer is a fantastic choice. Yeah, am I back? Okay, no. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, it usually lasts for a little bit, and then it yeah, I had the I have the internet company coming tomorrow because they have an issue with the internet here, uh, their service. So it's up and down. And they can't fix it. And I've had five texts come out. I went ballistic on the phone today with them. And oh, I got I'm sixty dollars sure yeah. off my bill is not is not my big win. I want this to be just stable and fixed. Get what you're paying for, yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Just give me what you pay for. Anyway. That is Bear Up, Bear Down, sponsored by Cars Keys. Cars keys. You could find them on Cars is uh, dresser sometimes. You can make that. You can make that cash out there. That check out the cash cars. Oh, <laughs> perfect. 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 Yeah, that. Give you a promo. You guys take those rubber ones, right? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Checks, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Listen, Lemuel Stinson, you've been a tremendous awesome. guest, an amazing person. Where could people follow you? Can they follow you? Are you on Twitter or any of these? You're on uh, the Instagram. Yeah, I'm on. Uh, I think on everything. I'm not sure. I, I know <laughs> <laughs> you look at Limited Stints, and I'm on Facebook on Limited Stints, and we got a lot of things we do on there. And uh, and like I say, we uh, I always do a, uh, a, a Sunday event with uh, a sports bar. Uh, over and under sports bar in Clear Lake. I mean in Webster, and nice. we we there every Bears game. So we always there in uh in Stadia Sports Bar and Grill. So nice. We have, we have that's, that's that's where we at most of the time, and we sit down, we watch the Bears game, and uh, people fans come up and talk, and like I said, we bring guys out to come and have a good time, and we enjoy it. So we like having have, having fun. Well, you were fun tonight. You really no, brought. Okay. The energy and some stories. We're gonna have to have you back on to give us some more stories. We gotta hear that. Uh, We're Jimbo gonna have to have Covert. the after hours Jimbo Covert story <laughs> from from Lemonhead. <laughs> Jimbo gonna beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> You're faster than he is. You can outrun him. Yeah. <laughs> I can't run from, probably can't run from him now. <laughs> 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 we'll have wow. playing at two steps. There you go. <laughs> as long as you have your drink and your two step, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Hey, that's <laughs> Listen, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. I reached out to this man. I said I'm one of my heroes as a kid, kid growing up. Not because I just won the 500. But even more so tonight for showing up here and really entertaining everybody. But finding out that you were 150 pounds playing in yeah. the NFL, that is a real testament to what? your athleticism. I know you were a hurdler, but you also put your face in there and tackled people. That is keeping it 100. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh. I, mean, I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I, I, you. I, I enjoyed it. You know, I ran out to get these headphones. Me and my Look wife were riding down the street and I had to get these headphones because I didn't have nothing to come to the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, boy, what do I do? So she set it up and everything. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, now you're all set for when we have you back. Man. Now, next now, time, I'm all good. I'm all good. Yeah. So we're, but we're gonna bring you. We're definitely gotta bring you back on. Yeah, when they when when Ted Phillips retires Lemuel, <laughs> Lemuel we're gonna have you on that show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's gonna be a twelve hour telethon when we do this and a full on celebration. One hundred fifty yeah, pounds. Ted Phillips retire. Yeah. One hundred fifty pounds of pure heart, as Toby Hill has Says eloquently lot. said, and that is the truth. What a good man. Everybody in the chat is telling you 
how much they appreciated you jumping on the show, taking us back down memory lane. But we're definitely going to have you back, Lemuel. And Absolutely. We're here I'll every Wednesday it. night, um, keeping it 100. Mm-hmm. Thank you right, so man. much. Much love to all my Chicago fans. Love you. Love you. Thank you for being Thank you. so sweet. You know, shy town, shy town. And you I was the Chicago kid, too. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All, all right, right, man. Thanks. Thank you. The Chicago kid. Yeah. <laughs> Kiss your kids, tell your wife thank you, and God bless you. We'll be talking. Absolutely. And I'll send you the show tomorrow. God bless you. That guy, Lemuel Stinson. Bring in the passion, man. That's bringing the passion. That's what we love on here. Yeah. That's what we do. You know, we don't just go for the here and now, we go for the story, the heart. The truth and the passion and the mule stints and like will be said, he played with heart and passion. He told you the accountability, kept it a hundred. Yep. Just a really good person and a really good man and father. We didn't get into that, but we're definitely gonna have Lemuel back because he has exactly what it is we talk about here all the time. He has the truth in his heart. And yep. that kind of passion comes through. It's not phony. It's not fake. But anyway. I'm sorry. The what? I'm just really confused right now. There you go. Uh, Thank you, Froze. What? Again, Phil. <laughs> did he free? Yeah, he did. Yep. We, lost, we lost him again. Well, but, Shane, it's about time. It's only you and I. Yeah, uh, real quick, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My back? No. Can't see you, man. There, you know you're. You're, you're real, Yeah, you're, you're real choppy. No. Try the try the reboot, Phil. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, so cars. Let's. I don't know what to do with this right now. Like yeah. we get to talk. I'm not. I'm not. It, I feel like Ricky Bobby. Like, what do I do with my hands? Exactly. Right very first, weird. First Claudio, and now Phil. I don't know. Is he texting me right now? But what are your I don't know. What is he? Just a second. He's texting me, I think. But moving into this week, I know we're not going to, I guess we can get into that. I can put it up there. Moving into this week versus Houston, what are your what are your thoughts on going into that? Because, I mean, I, I see, you know, you got Deshaun coming here. You Do you know we could have drafted Deshaun? Yeah, Watson? exactly. There's only 47 articles that have yeah. been out today about oh, that. Yeah. I had no idea. It was but crazy. But you have... Patrick Mahomes coming and counting his fingers in Soldier Field, and now you know damn well it's going to be happening again. And uh, do you have any confidence at all in this in this team being able to go out there and do anything, or do you think that do you think along with pretty much how we are, do you think that they've they've called it a day and folded it up? Well, I I I think it's folded up. You know, the hard part is really the Texans don't have a lot of talent on offense at the skill position. There shouldn't be, you know, this game in a normal situation shouldn't even be close, but look at, look at what Watson and that offense did last week, like them pulling and being close in that game is a game. They really had no business being in. Like, I don't, I'm not afraid of their defense. I'm not really afraid of their offense. Um, But I, I just feel like the team has kind of been like, this is, this is it. It's done. It's game over. And so aside from the young guys like Monty and, and it feels like Komet is really coming on strong at this point, all the, and, and, you know, Mitch trying to prove something, everybody else that seems to have a guaranteed contract right now is on full on coast yeah. mode. I mean, that's, that's really what it looks like on the field. And, and, you know, yeah. Everybody knows they're not making the playoffs, so no one really gives a shit for him right now. So. Yeah, Phil, they they drew up a play for Komet. What is going back? on? <laughs> Am I back? Am I all right? I yeah, you're to yeah. Firefox, but I'm hardwired all the way from the router. Not even going on Wi-Fi. Yeah, I think I think that there's an issue outside of your yeah. It's the house. internet service provider because yeah, it's unfortunate. It gets me so irritated. Like I get fired a sweat off my head i get so angry with this shit yeah, anyway let's no, I... push through the show 
Yeah. On this, what's our next? Cause closed out, so we got tweets, right? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Can... All right, so let's do the tweets. Hopefully, we get through. He's the smartest man. Imagine a network blaming Khalil Mack for all the Bears' fails. <laughs> it's no wonder Shane and Phil bought a yacht and put up their wind and sails. He's the smartest man, and this is the best tweet of the week. Oh, yeah. Bad with the fade out. Yeah, I was I was working. I hit the hit the wrong <laughs> button here, but yeah, this is we took a little bit different approach on the tweets this week. But um, this off season, as everybody knows, is going to be a very interesting one. I think that it's not going to take us too long after our last game. They call it. They refer to it as Black Monday in the NFL. The last games are on Sunday. The, the, the following day is when people start to lose their jobs. I expect if the Bears decide to move in that direction, which hopefully they do, I think we'll hear about it then. Uh, hopefully, uh, Waddle, or not Waddle, Sylvie was talking about it on, he went on with Hogan Johns, and they were saying that they hope that George is doing his due diligence, has been doing it already to this point. We it Has he or not? But... Um, Everybody's heard cars. You and I talked about this a little bit. I talked about it with Greg Braggs a little bit today, too. And uh, 10% ownership in the Chicago Bears is Pat Ryan. You've heard the name, cars. Oh, you know, billionaire Pat Ryan, who's big in Northwestern. And I heard today, I'm not sure if this is true or not, I heard it from friend of the show, Greg Braggs, that if... And when the Chicago Bears are sold, uh, Pat Ryan has first dibs really? to purchase the Chicago Bears. It would make sense as him yeah, being, with him being 10%. Yeah, with him being 10%. How much, what does he do for a living, Cars? Do you know? Uh, he was insurance. He was Aon, excuse me. So he, he was, uh, yeah, or... One of the guys, so one of the guys that owns 10%, the other guy is the McDonald's guy, and yeah. Ryan started Aon. And so he's a multi billionaire. And yeah, he's a billionaire. I guess when he Ryan bought in. Field. Yeah, exactly. Well, pretty much everything in Northwestern is named it's after him. him. Right. Holy shit. So we all know how to. Sh- old. Yeah, Two, he's. Though. Yeah, he's he's old, but I I don't know what he's got. He must have children, and I mean, they have a young how old what, how old did you say he was? Eighty three, ninety three. Oh, ninety three. So he's he's a spring chicken compared to our current <laughs> owner. Is what you're saying, right? But no, pretty, this pretty much. Well, everybody's favorite Jason Lock and Forrest sent out a tweet talking about Pat Fitzgerald is going to be very very high on the list if the Bears do move. Into a different direction, away from Matt Nagy and Teddy Greenstein, who used to work for the Chicago Tribune, who recently left, did his last article on October 24th that he wrote for the Trib was all about Pat's, Pat Fitzgerald, spent some time with him, knows him very, very well. And Teddy Greenstein sent this out in reference to Jason Lock and Forrest's tweet. Phil, if you want to just bounce that comment off there. Uh, Lock and Forrest said, if the Bears make a coaching change and it's becoming increasingly likely they will do so, they'll look within the state first. And he's obviously speaking about Pat Fitzgerald, the head coach of Northwestern. And Teddy Greenstein, who I was just referring to, uh, to said... Fitzgerald didn't take the Michigan gig that went to Hoke. He declined to interview with the Packers two years ago. But if Matt Nagy gets dumped, look out. Wow. I would not overlook that. Cars, you know just as well as I do, this is the typical Chicago Bears way that it's preordained and it's something. And and Pat Ryan has... His guy, the word on the street is that is exactly who he would want as the Chicago Bears head coach. Not saying that it's going to happen, but 
with this franchise, we've seen time and time and time again, there's always something else that's set up or, like I said, preordained. And I lock on Fora. Everybody knows I hate the dude, but listen, he put that out there, and I... I'm not going to discount it at all. It's the, most, it's the most Bears thing to do, right? I to, agree. To throw up a, it's what the Bulls used to do, right? To throw up the facade of, you know, we're going to do this hardcore research. We're going to leave no stone unturned. And then two days into yeah. it, they, they're going to hire a guy. So Ryan is 83, not 93. That's right. So I, yeah. I, I, right. Sorry. Yeah, would it be good with numbers, nerd? But anyways. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, 83 or 90. Yeah. <laughs> nerd alert. So. He's still drinking Ensure Shakes for lunch, right? Uh, yeah, he's definitely taken anyway. <laughs> yeah, so it's just it's one more thing. Like we said, we want to cover all the ground for everybody here. But um, <laughs> you start to see these things, and, and you see you know the, the the ownership group, and you start to slowly put these pieces together, and we all know the history with this team and like i said i'm not going to discount it at all yeah no it's the most again it's the most bears thing to do like it's why do something different let's just go with somebody we know you know let's let's just you know it's i told shane the other day it's a hundred percent chance your head coach is either going to be uh harbaugh or Fitz. like there's a hundred percent chance there's no one else that's going to be Really? That's I it's the most bears thing to do. Think about it. They've had all this trouble. So what do they go to? They go to the well of, you know, these guys know us, they know our history, they know how important winning is to our franchise. It's not that important to this franchise, but shh. And that's the way that we'll go through and do it, right? Like we we always make the joke about, you know, They'll they'll uh, they'll hire Harbaugh and they'll bring in Singletary as defensive coordinator and they'll they'll have uh, Olin Krutz come in and coach the offensive line right all these things that we always hear like yeah they would ideally rather do that because yeah. and this is this is the thing too like I don't want to discount Pat Fitzgerald either I am a little intrigued I don't know like I'm not a I don't follow Northwestern but. I think that there is some intrigue there. There's an unknown there. And I think that that's probably, you know, uh, the Hogan Johns uh, podcast that they did with Sylvie. Um, I would suggest everybody go out there and listen to that. I listened to it today. Um, at the end of the interview, they start talking and Kevin Fishbane came on. Kevin Fishbane is an alum. Uh, Adam Hogue, you know, works the sidelines. For, for Northwestern and they're talking about the Big Ten champions and stuff like that and, and Kevin Fishpain said well if Northwestern is the Big Ten champ that's a hell of a way for Pat Fitzgerald to go, to go out to his next team and then everybody on the panel got extremely silent <laughs> and Adam Hogue said well who would be that next team Kevin and then they just all started laughing you know because they all knew they they knew where he was yeah. going with it and Kevin Fishbane said got me a little bit worried he goes if you <laughs> if you're worried about the way that Matt Nagy uses his timeouts just wait until you get a hold of Pat Pat Fitzgerald and he, then they started talking about how Pat Fitzgerald would handle the media and handle the fans of the Chicago Bears because he he said Northwestern post game it's not the Chicago Tribune isn't there the, the Chicago Sun Times isn't there ninety nine percent of the questions that he gets post game in his post game pressers are from students. Oh yeah, he's it, there's not even just that he's. He's, so I like I like the idea of a program builder, right? Like yeah. what Rule is doing at Carolina. Well, that's, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's there, that there's work. intrigue there, but there's still he is yeah. so conservative in his play calling. Like he yeah. gets killed for being conservative in the college game. And um, you know, if you can win, uh, I love when they all took uh, 
got angry when they called when uh, was it Joey Galloway referred to them as a bunch of Reese Davises, right? Because yeah. it's a bunch of three yeah. star white guys playing football that that attain more. And I love that as the ideal. But he like if you do it, you've got to pair him with either someone who's going to be ultra aggressive on the offensive side, or else it's going to be. You know, I'd be terrified of what that offense would look like. See, I like this guy because of what you're saying, what he's done with Northwestern. Absolutely. The recruiting class and talent that he gets there is half of what. Yeah, you can't deny that. I mean, Northwestern, remember Northwestern way back in the day with Darnell Autry and stuff like that? I can remember when they burst on the scene. You know, back then I was a lot younger, and you're like, Northwestern, and then they kind of went away. But then Pat Fitzgerald comes on the scene, takes him over, and yeah. Yeah, they. His name Barnett. He ended up going. Gary Barnett. Yeah, Gary. Barnett. He went to Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy is a former inside linebacker. He knows the game. He's a leader of men. He obviously uses that as motive. Us again, especially at that program. You know, they, I don't. Everyone asks that I. You're you freezing. Froze. Yeah, yeah, you're freezing again. Yeah. I could see it when you guys spin. But anyway, everyone knows this guy. I don't know him personally. They asked me who I like. The reason why I like Harbaugh, even though I've liked him for yeah, you've we were on a message board with cars. I've liked this guy as a football coach because of accountability, because of aggressiveness, because of the ability to change with the personnel that you have and not just say, I'm going to run my system. Now, college is different than the pros. You get what you get in regards to recruiting. So it's hard to say, oh, this guy sucks because of this. What Fitzgerald has done with that says a lot about him as a coach. That's all I could see. So he's passing that litmus test, and that makes him an intriguing Maybe he'll bring back those shoulder pads. There you go. (laughs) I had those types of pads. No, it's you know the the thing the thing that scares me with Harbaugh is just been like the 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 uh, AD at Michigan doesn't even talk to him, doesn't yeah. even want to deal with him, which was the same problems that got him run out of San Fran. Like if you get Harbaugh, you're getting three, yeah, because maybe he doesn't, four he doesn't years. Deal with politics and corporate nope. shit. He does so not want that. He, he's what Ballard was saying to McCaskey. Either get Ted the fuck out of here, Jay Cutler the black cloud, and let me vote. Fo- He's that. So he knows, like I said, the sh- where the shit stinks in Hallis Hall. He knows where that is. Yeah. So he's that's a plus. And he's maniacal. Pat Fitzgerald seems to be maniacal to me when I watch it. And granted, they lost to Michigan State when I was watching them. But his kids play fucking hard. And they tackle, and they go after, and he teaches fundamentals. So what are you going to do? Uh, until it happens, we will cover it. I could guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. But it is intriguing, Shane. Well, yeah, that's different. like I said. We I took a little bit different approach to the tweets this week. I wanted to make you guys think, you know, in two totally different yeah. directions. But, you know, we got a lot going on. I see there's a lot of people in the – in the chat and who do you want as your next head coach and like i said i know there's swanky seems to ask draft questions every week and we tell them the same thing we got lots it's we're december there's four games left we got lots of time to get into that and the, four more games to drink ourselves yeah, through. Let exactly. us get through those. <laughs> but this this is the this is the thing though. This is this should be the this should be where George McCaskey does put his fingers in and said you know what you need to play this fucking guy because i need to see if he's gonna be here next year riley ridley you're gonna fucking play you know you need to see like sam sam mustafer like i said how how was he not playing earlier when they needed when they needed guys you know what i mean but it's just that this is what i never have understood with this football team it's Pure craziness to me. You know, you got a guy like DHC who goes out there and has made plays this year when he's been when he's needed to make them. To me, I'm putting him out there now over Gibson. 
to just put him. They're not the same guy. The physicality is different. I get it. I'm putting him out there. You have four games left. See what you have in him. You never know how these guys are going to, how they're, what's going to happen when you give them their shot. You know, look, Sam, Sam Mustafer's running with it. Maybe yep. DHC runs with it. You don't know. And that, that's exactly what they should be. They, did you notice who played on defense this week? Somebody that we haven't seen, number 99. Yep. He was out there. Gibson. Yeah. A guy that we, by the way, gave up an extra pick. Yeah. Fourth round pick in this draft to secure. And it took until week 12 for him to finally see the field. Like, well, he yeah. saw it earlier and he fucking got railroaded. And then yep. they held him accountable. Now he went out there. He played hard. They'll yes, see. They'll see that they they seem to do that with the rookies, and they actually yeah. seem to be a little bit too hard on them. But Hector has a thing here. You know, I heard the name Dave Tobe. The word on Dave Tobe is he's he's interviewed. The things that I've heard is that he's totally fallen fucking flat with who he wants on his coaching staff, and that he's been pretty awful in interviews. It has been a, a what a eight year process yeah. of him being a yep. candidate by now, because I mean it. He left under Lovey, right? I mean yep. he was Lovey's guy and left during that time. It's at some point you got to wonder. It's not that he hasn't been getting interviews, which is the opposite of the Vic Fangio, right? He's been getting interviews every year and just yep. hasn't hasn't right. gotten it. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. You know, special teams coaches. Like John Harbaugh, Mike Ditka, there's plenty more that have gone on to be head coaches. They have to coach everybody. They got to be good communicators. They, yeah, and that's you know one more thing. One more thing about you talking about being a communicator. One more thing that Sylvie Sylvie was on the beat back when they fired Wanstead, and they remember they did that whole thing, and and they're trying to figure out you know who is going to come in. Remember Phil, you talked about the yeah. Dave McGinnis fiasco and all of wow. that. If you remember, um, these coaches would come in and interview, and then the Bears would usher them out, and there would be an immediate press conference with yeah. the the guy. And Sylvie said that Russ that was Grimm. yeah, that was yeah, the that was, family. Yeah, Gun, <laughs> Gunther Cunningham That's, was up for the job then. Do you remember Gunther? Gunther, oh Gunther yeah. Cunningham. Yep. But um, Dave McGinnis, Dick Duran. Well, Sylvie said that. Part of the Chicago Bears process was to usher these guys out immediately in front of the press, and the Chicago Bears recorded all of it. And they used these press conferences as part of their hiring process to see yep. how they were in front of the media. Mm -hmm. Sylvie was sitting there when Dick Duran had his, had his press conference after he interviewed and Sylvie said he turned, I think he said it was to Rick Morrissey. And he said, yeah, this guy ain't going to get the fucking job. Said that about Dick Duran. And two days later, he got the fucking head coaching job. Jimmy Tip plays are nice. They're good. We need more of those. If, if you think about it, what's always fascinating to me is a, is a charter franchise. Yeah, and, I know. And we, always, we always hear about that and how that matters. No charter franchise should ever go and hire Dick Duran. If it's if the job is that amazing, mm -hmm. Dick Duran should never. No charter franchise should have ever hired Mark Tressman. Yeah, like right. these are these are not those kind of moves. And um, you know, to go back to my my the the George thing, and I know this is getting off the rails, and we're we're weeks ahead, but like George and Ted have been a part of every interview. They yep. have been a part of every decision and they do these you know we drafted a quarterback because he made a secret reservation at a steakhouse at the unc yeah. you know Camry. campus under a, 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 a under a private name and that blew ryan pace away like the way that we look at people and value people has just been wrong so yeah like ideally you would want george to be involved enough to say like hey why is it riley ridley playing but jesus christ you you, you know we always heard that like Dick Duran was untouchable, and yeah. when they hired uh, Jerry Angelo, they forced him on Jerry Angelo. Why? Because he went to church with the McCaskies every yeah. week, yeah. right? Like these are the things that they pay more attention to. 
uh, that give me completely terrified situations. Yeah, and that's the thing. Do you remember when Dick Duran got fired? Do you remember Brian Urlacher came out and said he I don't want to play for another head coach. Yeah. He said the same thing about Lovey. He said the same thing about Lovey Smith and then I mean it was Urlacher was broken down, let's just be honest at that point. Yeah. And he didn't play for another coach after Lovey Smith, but that's the thing and I mean there's I get it and and it's going to I look at Mark the Tressman over Bruce Arians end of story. It, it, that that comes second yep. to Ballard over uh, sure. oh, yeah. over Ryan over Pace. Pace. I, that is still speaking of Pace. Since you brought him up, let's play this for Mister Pace. <laughs> There you go, keeping it 100. Always something different here on the best channel. Draft Dr. Phil, there you go. Pace and you know what? You know what the good part about tonight is? And we're gonna. Hey! No, <laughs> cut it out. Hey! <laughs> no, cut, cut it, it out. out. But let's get into our last segment: the Cherie Burnett set. I mean, if I'm gonna root for a team, I want to give it all I Next got. Next play. Pass. 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 There was no you rhyme or reason. just drove down the field. Mr. Montgomery breaks a huge run. If he scores on the run, you don't got to worry. But you do got to worry because he gets tackled at the freaking 15. There was no oh, rhyme or reason. Next play, shotgun. What's your prediction? The old line is playing shitty. What's the skinny? No identity. If Nagy can't find it, there's a secret with the enemy. Red zone opportunity. Once again, they gotta settle for three. The reality of coaching when the defense has to carry the team. Prediction. What you think would happen versus what does. A light year from the Super Bowl and now we're losing buzz. Nagy has no answers, just predictions that don't change. The segment is the truth. Give it by the guys and feel ashamed. There you go. Prediction cars. Let's kick it off with you. I, you know, as we were kind of talking about earlier, uh, this is a game that should easily be a win because I don't, you don't fear anybody on the Texans defense. You definitely, especially with Fuller out, don't really feel threatened by anyone other than the quarterback uh, on the team. That said, uh, the team is flat out checked out, right? They're on to, they're on to 2021 uh, in their mind. So there's no way I can sit down and actually say that, you know, that, that they're going to win this game and they'll just find new ways to lose. So that's, that's the unfortunate part for me. Uh, my, my bold prediction is, um, I mean, my bold prediction is going to be the defense is going to find a new way to let us down this week. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, and I, and I get a little upset at folks that are like, you can't pick on the defense. You can't pick on the defense. Look, the, the defense is getting 60% 
plus of the salary cap this year. There's a lot of money in there. There's a lot invested. These guys, you know, they've been reading their own press clippings for too long. And uh, I'm looking at a 24-17 game for the Houston Texans. Nice. There you go. I'm with you, man. I have no faith in this coach. He's lost the team. When you lose when you're up and there's 91% chance of you winning and you find some way to lose. Oh, it was more than that. I think it was 99.1. It was the was same it 99. as 99.1? 99.1. Yes. It was the same basically 91. as what we did against Detroit week 1. Basically. Holy. I mean, it's even worse because let's just look at that last series up 3 and you decide to st- drop back to throw twice. That's <laughs> The, that's the story of this guy as a coach. Like, who does that? Who does? Just run the ball, and if they stop you, you punt, and you make them win. Instead, you fucking throw. You can't even make it up. It's so dumb. Forget about everything in the game with, you know, Allen Robinson and everything. Matt Nagy, he's just lost the team. And I felt like, you know, we pointed out, Mac, everybody's playing – there was loafing out there from Leno and Allen Robinson, and we saw it from freaking uh, Anthony Miller going out of bounds when he can go up field. I was pointing out all this stuff for you guys on the tape, Never Lies. You can't hide from the cameras. The sky no. in the eye doesn't lie. I'm going to go with you, Cars. It's going to be uh, Watson, 28, the Chicago Bears, 17. I'll give them 14, but I'm going to go 17. 28 and 10, I just think you saw Deshaun Watson to that game in the presser, Shane. Yeah. Dude was about to cry. It yeah. means something to him so much. They've had turmoil in their coaching staff, and this kid is a leader. <laughs> yeah, and he, he just needs a little bit more fuel to the fire. Like, he's he still can't believe the that players. Chicago, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm betting on him, 28-17, the Texans, and Nagy should have been fired on Monday. It's, I can't believe he hasn't been. Uh, this whole I team, this, obviously. But let me say this real quick. Why do you continue to do what you've always done? It hasn't worked. So That's the Chicago Bear way. Send the message. 100 years. Try out another coach. See if your team gets energy, yeah. and you can honestly look. Jack, at, yeah, if the Bears Jack, get, no, they can't. I believe get a top ten. I think they can get at, the, I, into nine. Top ten. No, I think it. Eight. I think if they got a bunch of help and they lost out, I think the high. I think the highest they can go is seven. Oh, I thought yeah. it was nine or yeah, like nine seven. or ten is the most likely landing right. spot for them at this right point. Right now, they're it, at eleven. Right. Thirteen. Thirteen. Right now. Thirteen. Lucky thirteen. Yeah, and listen. But hey. feel to your feel to your point though. That was, I mean, that what you just described. Try something new. That was the Lovey Smith era, yeah. right? Like the whole era of just we're gonna run the ball, we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna have seven different offensive coordinators run the same game plan that I want them to, and just expect it to be different. You know, whether it's Turner or Mike Martz or whoever. Like we're just gonna keep doing the same thing. And, and hope to God that this works out. And it's like, great, that's well, phenomenal. I just mean, listen. Yeah. You've never, no. you've never fired and sent a message that this organization is different now. Right. No. Are doing the same shit, just like HL is saying. It's insanity. The coach cost you that game. No, nobody can tell me different. I'll show you on the tape. He did it. When everything was going your way, he forgets David Montgomery. When everything is still in the balance, he fucking drops back twice. After the first one, when Mitch scrambles up and dives, you should know as a coach, oh, I got Leno out there. I got Fetty. I got to worry. Let me just run the ball. Nope. Straight drop. It's just, I mean, it's, yeah. it's telling that we've changed – to you know letting laser call the plays and we see the same thing exactly. right like yeah. the room that they have built is oh. you know and and what did uh what did flip get fired for it in mm-hmm. minnesota the same same thing, Great. thing. Great. so i i'm telling you like i i didn't 
really know what to expect from Laser, but when he, <laughs> I lost any confidence or any excitement I may have had just just for the sake of change when he came out and said, "Oh no, we're not on a three game losing streak." You know, we we don't look at it that way. And I'm like, "What the fuck? What are you right. talking about? What are you talking about?" It makes a ton of sense to say it that way. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. We, that's, we're that's in an organization definite... where that's okay, right? Like that's we're in an organization where we've told everybody that's fine. Yeah. It's amazing to me. Yeah. So here is my prediction. I think it's going to be much of the same, and it's going to go a little bit like this. <laughs> that still, pretty much says it was still going. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't <laughs> trim off the end there enough, but yeah, I don't have any confidence. I mean, I listen. I get pissed when the Bears do Bears things, so I'm pissed off quite a bit when it comes to this team. I had to laugh the other day when they fumbled the football, and I, you know. Eli and Riley were sitting like right behind me and she's like, Oh my God. And I'm like, no, they're going to, I said, Detroit will score here. They're going to yeah. score a touchdown. You just, you just, you knew it. You knew it. And I couldn't, it was hard. I, to me, I couldn't get mad because it's part of me was a little bit happy because I'm like, Oh, this is going to be the impetus to, to change. And I never want to be the guy that roots against this team. And I mean, as bad as it is, we're, we're still still one game out of the the playoff right. hunt right now, right? That's the yeah. that's the bad part. But, against but, them. No way. I yeah, no, I can't. I will never root root against the Bears I ever. Can't. But you know what's well, ironic about that? I am keeping it a hundred here. Yeah, I won't either. the 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 ironic part is, I also don't have to because I've seen this team happen so much. I know the way that this is going to go, right? Like, yeah, we all we all knew. Like, I I, I told everybody earlier in that Philadelphia game when uh, Cody Parkey hit the the field goal when they called timeout. I turned the TV off because I knew exactly how this was going yeah. to go. I've been here. I've lived through this. I've done this. And I want, I, I started screaming five minutes before everybody else because I knew, what, knew exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. And, and so that's why I will never waste energy rooting against them because they're just going to – they're going to do it, unfortunately, right yeah. now. Yeah, it's amazing. It's going to be much of the same for the Chicago Bears, and I mean, we got we got four games left, and I mean, we like I said, Phil and I talked a little bit today. I talked to Greg Braggs about it too. I said Bears fans are so deprived of of you know. Here we are talking to Lemuel Stinson about uh, Neil Anderson and about Walter Payton and, and you know about these guys, and I said Chicago Bears fans, like I said. I brought it up last week on here. I love Darnell Mooney, but it's so not. I'm not singling out Claudio here, but there's people out there that are talking about this kid like he's having a Randy, like yeah, like he's Randy Moss type season. But that's because our bar is so fucking low for anything on offense. I said we all deserve better, and it's just this. This has never, ever, ever been. A one-issue fix for this franchise. It's never been that way. It's a whole bunch of them, and it's it's gotta start on Black Monday. You have to. George has to be pissed off enough where he can look in the fucking mirror and say, you know, I, I get it. As an owner, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be in on a fucking interview. You know what I mean? I, that yep. if 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 it's my fucking team, yeah, I'm gonna be in there. But you have to make the fucking the the change at president. And it, if it if it takes them letting Ted ride off into the fucking sunset and phrase it retirement, then so fucking be it. Sylvie yeah. brought up make a different operate. You know, there there's a, a financial ops and a football ops. Ted, yep. you go over, and it's like still, 
there's still yeah, this absolutely. fucking there's still this part of the fr- the fan base that wants to to take to be contrarians and say, oh, I fucking laugh at all these idiot Bears fans that that are worried about Ted Phillips. Well, yes, I'm worried about Ted Phillips. He's involved. You can't tell me that he's I not involved. Him in the open, he was right yeah. in the room when they made the exactly. The he has been the one Trubisky. constant. It, he's, exactly. He's mo- everybody's he is- talking about him. In reality, these people, you've heard Lemuel bring him up. Like, how does Lemuel know the pro- Because he's involved. He's been right. involved. He's, it's the it's whole reason joke. that Ballard wanted him out, exactly. right? You can't say he's not involved. And then say, like, here that Ballard's like, I want him as far away from this. Yeah. As he was possible. involved. They wanted to trade up for Ladanian Tomlinson, and he. Well, let it go. Phil, that's the uh, thing, and nobody's finishing that story because it wasn't just that. Mark Hatley was the guy calling the shots on draft yes. day then. The, the Bears had a deal in place to trade up for Ladanian Tomlinson. The Bears were at like eight or nine, and they ended up taking David Terrell, David Terrell. from Michigan. Yeah. So Ted Phillips, because of money, because LT was a top five pick, Nixed the deal. So Mark Hatley came back around, and this is 100% truth. This is a fact. Mark Hatley doubled around, tr- had another deal in place to move up to the back of the first round because there was another running back that draft that kept yes. on dropping, Deuce McAllister. Yep. He yes. had another deal in place to get another first round draft pick and their first two picks were going to be David Terrell and Deuce McAllister. Ted Phillips, again, because of money, having to pay a second first-round draft pick, nixed the deal. So the Bears doubled back. They sat in the second round. They didn't move up, and they took the next running back that was available on their board in Anthony Thomas. Now, listen, I'm a Bears fan. Anthony Thomas winning Rookie of the Year that year over Ladanian Tomlinson, no. Was ridiculous. Yeah, it was ridiculous. That's that's just, I mean, there's being a Bears fan, then there's being a fucking meathead. That was craziness. But can you imagine? Two of the fucking, I mean, Deuce McAllister was good for a lot of years in this team, or in this league. Can you imagine if we had LT... I mean, oh like, my God! Go from Walter, and to he LG, wanted to be like, here. He yeah. wanted to be here. He that was, was his huge idol. Walter Payton yes, man, like me. Yeah, he built a fucking hill in his backyard of his house because of Walter Payton to run the hill. Still waiting for that video, Phil. But <laughs> <laughs> Listen. no, it kills me. It it kills me. We continually make as a franchise, right? We have had two years where we've had two first round picks you know in my life and one was when they drafted brad muster and wendell davis yeah and the other was when they drafted michael, michael haynes, haynes and rex, rex gross that's boy again. it in but our lifetime do you want to know the bad well, part about that wolford and trace armstrong that's that right they alive are, for that that was a great draft and but do you remember the Denell like wolford draft. draft it was known for like Two and a half months leading up to the draft that they were that they were drafting Denell Wolford. It, oh, it was like remember. a thing. Yeah, it was like a thing that got out there. But I love Denell Wolford. Michael Haynes and Rex Grossman. That that was the Minnesota Vikings draft. Do you remember when they forgot yes, to submit Kevin their pick? Williams. Kevin Williams was supposed to be the Bears' pick that, and that year. Was, and the only reason we had that one is we made the trade down with the Jets. Uh, because they drafted Dwayne Robertson yep. number four overall. That's yep. right. That's yep. right. From Kentucky, right? Is that where yep. he was from? Well, we got in a big he fight, Phil, on that one in the message board. I will never forget the Dwayne arguments. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know why. There's certain memories I have, like I so that that group of guys. I remember being at the bar, the sports bar in El Grove Village when Anthony Thomas got announced as the draft pick and we all just shit on it. It was like so unhappy about that move. And it, like, there are certain things about that that I always remember, but do, maybe it wasn't you, but I remember arguing with a lot of people about Dwayne Robertson. Like, yeah, he's great, but he hasn't done anything. Like, yeah, he's, he's got all these great profile numbers. Show me what he's done. Like, no, no, no. Right. It's because, because he was the only one. Okay. Yeah. 
Sorry. Michael Haynes got drafted because he had two sacks in the Senior Bowl. He had, we had a great senior year. They just wanted MVP. to ignore his freshman, junior, and or sophomore and junior and years. Cade right? McDown were both MVPs oh, of the yeah. Super Bowl. Cade Listen, it's been a Moxie. great show. Don't forget, Bears Hour Live right after the Detroit Lions. It's the best Chicago Bears postgame show on the planet. Bar none, it's Bears Hour Live immediately after each and every Bears game with host. Shane, the smartest man, and draft Dr. Phil Otoshin every Sunday, Monday, or Thursday, immediately after Bears games. Your guys, draft Dr. Phil and Shane Marsaw are live on Bears Hour Live. Subscribe to the show via the Tape Never Lies Network, which can be found on YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and Twitch. It's the best Chicago Bears postgame show on the planet, Bears Hour Live. Oh, shit! There you go. Bears Hour Live this Sunday, right after the game. I got my Jim Harbaugh glasses on. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go first with my shout-outs this week so my connection stays together for a little (laughs) while because it's giving me anxiety. I want to shout-out Dustin Reagan Padilla. Who my sent son. me a message? Oh my God! I know where he's going with this. Said, I come Phil, believe- I owe you an apology. You were so right about Matt Nagy, and that takes a lot of balls for somebody, a fan, and say the truth. Listen, I I do this. I love to do it. I love this team. I would love the opportunity to coach this team because I know, and the as Spencer Strong is my witness, that I would work my ass off, and this team would play. Like you wouldn't see the accountability. There'd be no hitting or choking cars, but there certainly would be a lot of pride and a lot of fundamentals being taught and kept accountable. And we would fucking run the ball. I'll tell you that. Uh, I want to shout out Rich Ludwikowski, my boy, Gary Williams, Gary, G E A R Y. He's a, he's a patron. Uh, Antoine Lee. Steven Henderson, e- Ivan Vargas. I saw him making a comment there. Brandon Levingston, Sony Paris, Cherie, Burnett, uh, Chris Bowditch, Vito Fiello, Bob Newbauer, Tim Anderson, Tom Stephanitis, Ron Rupp now. I hope he's doing well. Claudio, the COVID. Hope got him. Hopefully, all I got to wear my mask more around that dude. My boy Costos from Greece. Uh, Travis Lee, Tom Sinclair, Fasawick, Rel Remy, Dave Luckett, Mark Egan. You guys are amazing. Kevin Curse Merrick. There's a KRC. I've never seen a name. KRC M A R I K. Maybe they changed the name. Andrew Brown. Uh, I want to thank the Sandlins, even though they're charging me. Of my mail. I haven't gotten the mail yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gotten it yet? No, because I haven't had any time to go down. I've been dealing with so much. My dad was here. I want to shout out my dad. I want to thank everybody that had reached out and said so many kind words for my father, about my father. He's becoming a real part of this network. And now he's like really into it. Uh, he's going to send a special message to you, especially the patrons. Hans Osterwalder from Germany, Shane. Chicago everything. Boy, Mondre Williams. Uh, Big A76. My boy, Miguel from Jersey. Paulie Coasters. Sandy Tom. I want to thank Scuba Josh, Al Vinyl, Kapagoic. Uh, linebacker coach Ryan Billings. He wants to come on BHL. Yep. We're going to get him locked in. I guess, Shane, you got him locked in. Yep. Brett Selms from Australia. Kaz. Jack. Turner. My boy, Quentin Botha from China. I got to wear my glasses. Just look at these. She's a big, she's an Otis Nichols fan. So I got to shout out Otis. Love you all. Those are my shout outs this week. I appreciate you all thinking of my dad. It's been very pulling. 
Go over there to the generalize.com a patron to check out the phone. Hopefully I'm Right, and he's know. breaking up now. Yep. Exactly. Perfectly he timed. It's a, that's why I got it out of the way. Yeah. It's so unstable, this motherfucker. It's so crazy, Cars. If I shared my screen, you'd see the speed test. Everything looks fine. It's just inconsistency why. with it. That, yep. That's why I called them. And they're coming tomorrow. Smoke weed every day. That's actually kind of telling, right? You saw that's not actually smoke coming out. That's the COVID. That's the COVID. <laughs> that's the Rona. That's the Rona. That's the Rona. The Rona. Cars, you got any shout outs? Cars. You know, I have no idea. Like, I'm glad you texted me because I didn't even know it was Wednesday right now. Uh, <laughs> it's that time of year, isn't it? Jesus, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I said me, to Phil, like I said. Our- I, it's I told, our end of the year. I'm insane. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. So, no, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, thank, actually, thanks to the Sandlins for the lovely Christmas card and, and cup holder. I appreciate that. My girls are freaking out that there are things, more things that have my face on it that aren't <laughs> just my picture. Um, so definitely appreciate that. But, no, thanks, everybody, for listening. I, I, I love doing this. We love you here. I love you guys. Am I internet is as, as consistent as this coaching staff and this football team right now so i gotta get that fixed i gotta hold it accountable finish us off yeah I'll keep mine <laughs> keep mine uh short and quick right just yes. like i do at home but uh <laughs> no shout out you guys i want to shout out lemuel stinson i uh yeah. thought he was great man he was it was funny, like pre-show, Phil and I will usually get on here around like 8 o'clock or 8.15, depending on, you know, family obligations, whatever. So we're in the green room, and I was down here loading up some tweets, and I get a little bell that goes off in my ear, and I'm not really paying any attention to the screen, so I'm looking down, and I'm typing stuff, and I look up, and I'm like, oh, hey, Lemuel Stinson. He, he was right there. I thought it was Phil the whole time. He's like, yo, what's up? I'm here. And I was like, oh, wasn't expecting that at all. So it was it was fun. So we chopped it up a little bit off air and he was a he was a he was a great dude i mean phil we could share some of the stories later some of the jokes that he was making pre-show a couple of them i didn't think that he would go there but man they were funny as funny as hell but um yeah great guy he's a guy that we're definitely going to be definitely going to be having back um you know he wants some swag alex we gotta get him some swag heather wants but yeah one more shout out. I want to. I want to shout out Cap one more time. The the groundswell of positivity and support that this network has gotten since his show coming on with us last week. It's still. I'm still getting DMs. I mean, the YouTube comments. It's every single day. Emails and texts. It's just. It's it's crazy. Cap fit. It, he knows exactly what we love to do here. I think he respects us because of our our knowledge and our passion, and we're not here just to to spout out bullshit and talk about our fucking sex lives. You know what I mean? So it's <laughs> well, we'll talk, so yeah. But uh, no, another shout out to Cap because he was really. I mean, he Phil. I think you would agree. He's he's on the our Mount Rushmore of people that we've. I mean, we've had the chance to talk to him what two or three times, and I mean, this this last time that he was on with us, it was it was different. It was a different vibe. I think he's on the same page as we are, but uh, totally, totally amazing. Uh, the chat was on fire, so he's awesome. Yeah, and he's a great yeah. person, and he's a supporter. absolutely. He's always going out of his way to support people. And yeah, I really think yeah, you gotta loves, love that. He absolutely, loves our network. Yeah, and if you guys want people to come on the show. As a fan of this network, you have yeah. one duty to like reach out to them. I would love to go you on the show, and then reach out to me and Shane. I, yeah, we've had we've met some people that we never even thought would come on the show and do well. Right from fans saying, "Hey, this guy, I'm not afraid." And obviously, I saw that one comment real quick. Koki two four fifteen, 
we always are going to bring people and as we move forward in the season and off season we're going to bring more people on the shows yeah so and what i'm going to share this with with you guys here i haven't even talked to phil about this yet but i think we're going to take i've decided i think we're going to take a little bit of a different approach um maybe the the week of christmas phil will i know that's a really really busy week for me because i have my my parents anniversary is the the 22nd my niece's birthday is the 23rd my sister's birthday is the 24th and then the 25th it's obvious yeah it's 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 a very expensive week but um i think we're gonna figure out something do something maybe a little bit different that week phil with the bears play the the jags that that following sunday which it's what i mean talk about the toilet bowl but i think what we're gonna do on keeping in a hundred fill maybe that week is we we're gonna if you're not a patron get over there and i think we're gonna make that uh patron heavy show where we'll funnel through and that's i'm gonna be taking some time off around the holidays phil i think you are too and i said maybe we can uh chop it up a little bit we can sit back and have a couple of beverages with the patrons if you want to get on that show get over to tapeneverlies.com yeah it'll be our christmas show get over to the tapeneverlies.com become a patron and you'll get your shot on keeping it 100 where anything goes you want to come on and talk football talk anything this is the the show for it so the week of christmas like i said gotta be a patron to get on for that show and uh you know where to do it tapeneverlies.com it's a 45 second process where you can uh sign up and we're not going to put you to sleep like what phil was looking like just a second ago when he was frozen on the screen but uh that that should be that should be fun so hopefully you guys will appreciate that and maybe maybe we'll get the chubs charge your fucking headphones (laughs) right now for that show Plug them in, bro. We'll get the elusive chubs on the show maybe that night. We'll put them we'll put them on the spot. I, I mean, know he's in be, he's in the one. He's we'll in the chat Charles, room. We can get Charles Leno on. Yeah, we'll hold we'll, we'll hold them accountable. We'll, we'll hold them accountable, won't we? I will. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway. So yeah, but we'll wrap it. It's a perfect place to wrap it up there. But guys, thanks for coming out. I know we ran into a few problems here and there tonight, but uh the content is always great. Lemuel Stinson was an awesome guest. Cars popped on, and I think you got cars. To, I think that's the first time you've been on with us, isn't it? With our when we had I our think, guest, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You guys are too embarrassed by me normally. Yeah, well, understandably, you two, uh, you two were gonna fight so. for a second. Look well, at yeah. Chubbs is chicken it out already. Doesn't that sound like a confident dude that'll be there? We'll, we'll see. see. We'll yeah, see. we'll see. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, see Chubbs. Spencer Strong. We love you guys. We always end it like this. Do you have any final say or we're done? You good? We're good. See you at BHL Sunday right after the game. If you're a patron, maybe we'll see you earlier. This has been a Shy City Sports presentation and a Tape Never Lies Network production. Keeping it 100. Thanks for tuning in to. The Tate Never Lies Network.